episode 173 and I, I, I've made the biggest mistake. I've made the biggest <laughs> mistake possibly of my career since the crew are not going to go on a run. Uh, I wasn't co-streaming it, but we've just come off getting our brains melted by detonation. Focus me and my house may be about to explode. I can't believe that happened though. It, yeah. Uh, Got to start the countdown for your house, man. It's <laughs> on watch for sure. <laughs> Dude, they played so well. It was ridiculous. I, I couldn't believe what I was watching. No, yeah. it was, They look like a different team. It was so... And that's, I think, the cool part. Obviously, we'll get to it. But it was just impressive, right? Like, it wasn't a fluke. Like, it wasn't anything like that. Just, I'm hoping it was a fluke. Team. William, I'm hoping it was a fluke. <laughs> no, it, it needs to be not a fluke, fluke, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> With all of those <laughs> games. I've actually... I've given notice on my house. I'm not even joking. I've given notice on my house today. Well, notice that you're going to blow it up. No, notice that, notice that I'm leaving because I'm going to leave the <laughs> yeah. property and yeah, somehow no, they don't create know why you're leaving. that I don't have they to have blow no this up. how that's going to happen. Yeah. Oh. I've, I've, well, not only I leaked my address on stream like three days ago as well. And oh. now I've got to like, dude, mm. dude, if someone comes and actually blows my house up, I'm going to be done for this. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. That's probable so, cause. Yeah, you should have gone, really with, uh, yeah. gone with Bren's one. That's, that's, yeah, that's, that's the what he bet. asked. No one has to know. <laughs> yeah, no one has to no know. One, I mean, <laughs> no one. Bren bet his firstborn child's name that FBX True. were going to lose to Carmen Core at Madrid. I so, did do that. Yeah, I did do that. That one was, that's a powerful one. That is that a powerful one. one. I was putting something into the universe with that one. Uh, uh, luckily, we are, persevered. We are going to talk about the DFM win and, and plenty of other things as well. We're going to start with Pacific. But before that, I just wanted to showcase, Kurt, we've got a link in the document of a Sentinels tweet. And I just wanted to see, because I feel like, you know, the 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 vibe of the Sliggy co-stream and the Chobra kind of casting is very wholesome. And yeah. the vibe of the Brennan Sideshow co-streams have been off the rails recently. <laughs> <laughs> so we might have delved into parts of the internet that you're not even aware of. I'm not sure. Has this floated across the Sliggy co-stream? Have you seen this? Uh, Are no, you aware I, of the I, term I, gooning? <laughs> no, I try to avoid <laughs> avoid Twitter because it's uh it's full of bots and yeah it's a it's a dark mm. place sometimes it seems. Ah, well this might bring some life into your <laughs> life <laughs> into your life. <laughs> so now. for any audio listeners, Sentinels posts out a tweet of what was the what was the original tweet even? No practice, no sleep, no problem, we win icebox. It was there when they were playing against Hundred Thieves. Mm -hmm. There's a response to it. Bearing in mind there's forty seven replies to this. Sentinels only chose to reply to one account. <laughs> it was a verified Twitter Blue account that just responded goated, and the account is called 3D Gooning. Now, we cannot open this account, and I would not recommend opening it. But if oh, Sliggy and Sobra wouldn't... What the hell is this? Don't, don't open it. I, can't, open I mean, I'm closing the tab just in case I press the wrong button. Oh, my God. Holy <laughs> moly. It's powerful. Guys, if you're under 18, you ain't clicking that link. Don't click that link. <laughs> It's uh, let's, let's find it. Where is Sliggy's it? Find it. Dude, I want to see the Sliggy reaction. To yeah, this. I Hold need on, to see the right, reaction. Let me. It's in the folder. It's in, it's in the document that we use for the okay. uh, for it. <laughs> what was the and original then, tweet? Oh, okay, the original... back to work. Here we go. Back to work. Yeah. Uh huh. Then... <laughs> what the? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Jesus, bro. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't really fit in with my uh, the vibes of my stream. I'm not gonna lie. No, definitely not. That's crazy, bro. <laughs> it's, it's powerful, man. It's powerful. Damn, dude. Don't. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Jump. So that was yeah. The, the Sentinel social media people know what they're doing. They, you know oh, what you did. Fuck, man. That's so funny. <laughs> you oh. know what you did. Now. Do our sponsors for this episode want to be associated with 3D Gooning? I have no idea, but I'm going to do it anyway. We're going straight into the sponsor read, baby. This episode is sponsored by Factormeals.com, uh, which uh, is a meal service. If you're spending way too much money on takeout because you're a gamer uh, trademark, which you definitely are. Listen, if you're, if you're listening to this podcast, if you're a pro, if you're an aspiring pro, if you're somebody that streams a lot, if you're somebody that watches streams a lot... 
you're spending ridiculous amounts on takeout. Don't even look at your Uber prices. <laughs> but if you go and have a look at factormeals.com, it's a similar kind of thing, except with a large range of meals that you can just whack into the, heat them up in like two minutes, easily done, chef prepared meals with a range of different options, calorie smart, keto, protein plus, vegan, veggie, tons of different options, and they're ready to eat in just a couple of minutes. And it'll save you tons of money compared to ordering takeout all the time. You can customize it to your schedule. Fast premium meals without the need for cooking. So head to factormeals.com slash Valorant50. Use the code Valorant50 and you get 50% off your first box. It's very simple. And then 20% wow. off the box after that. So there you go. Valorant50 at factormeals.com for 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next one while the subscription is active. Thank you for sponsoring the podcast because Bren dropped an F-bomb in the reaction to the I 3D did? Gooning account. Yes, you did. So we did monetize already, <laughs> even if we weren't for talking about that account, which we probably were. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I just, yeah, I got too excited. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, it was a it was a I bold topic excited. to start off with. To be honest, yeah, if you're trying to avoid swearing, that was a really bold way of doing <laughs> it. <laughs> well, I think that just primed. Let's let's dig in then to the T1 losses this week, and and the Paper X game I thought was going to be one of the big ones that we were talking about. But but who the who the hell Dude, cares I, about that game? Let's I talk just about woke up. DFM. And I got slapped in the face with a DFM win. I haven't even had time to watch the game. <laughs> Because I've been on, a, I'm on a different time zone to the rest of you, and I woke up and I was like, that can't be right. I'm like seeing, I'm seeing tweets from people like praising the the, the DFM players. I'm like, that can't be right. That can't be right at all. You all need to explain to me what happened because I, you said it's not a fluke. No. You said it's not. No. It wasn't. It wasn't just some like inconsistent factors. They were actually playing really well. Yes, they were. So, they were playing real well. I mean, it's it was a combination of everything, and I think that's why it's so hard to believe is that it, it was very clear that not only did they seemingly anti T1 very hard, which I think that was very apparent, but then on top of that, like they were trading for each other, they were always covering each other's angles. No one was overheating ahead of the team. Like there were mistakes. I'm not saying it was like 100% the cleanest game we've ever seen, but they were working as a team, which is the least of anything we could have said about DFM's past iterations. And this was across an entire best of three. And they also, the, what impressed me the most was they didn't lose control when they were close to winning at all. Like that's also not easy to do. So, yeah, not just, just that. Very, they actually came thing. back on yes. ascent. Like their ascent win was them being able to come back from being down. I think it was nine five because the first half was seven five, and then they lost pistol right. So, and then yeah. they just they just kept winning on defense. They never <laughs> let it get to them. They never choked the comeback. They just continued to put up good defensive rounds over and over and over again. I T one looked really good on Lotus. They they continued to look good on Lotus, but like. The first and third map were DFMs. It was. And, I was getting uh, panicked watching it. <laughs> yeah, I saw, <laughs> I saw you in chat panicking. I saw the panic <laughs> typing. Um, so, I mean, even Ascent, I would go and say that T1 played pretty well there. That's the mm -hmm. thing. I, I honestly reckon, like, if... Um, I reckon pretty much every team that played against uh, DFM first time seeing it on Ascent, I think they would have beaten everyone. I really do. I, I think that they. I think it looked so good. I, I was just like surprised. It was just new stuff coming out. Everything had a plan, especially like anything to do with alts. If they had an alt, if the enemy had an alt, it just had a solid plan. And yeah, that's the way they started it off. I was like sh shell shocked. It's, it's like I just didn't know what I was seeing. I was just like, this is insane. Probably yeah, the that's... biggest improvement that we've seen. That, yeah, well, uh, there's two things there, right? One is the biggest improvement, and the other is the fact that it was like the first time that they'd played this well and played that style. So on the first point, though, th with regards to the improvement, people have got to remember, this DFM team, the old version of the roster, butt cheeks. I mean, just butt cheeks. <laughs> and they were losing just so much all last year. But even this new version of the roster is the crazy raccoon core that I don't think they've ever played that well. Uh, to be honest no. with you, when I was watching them in tier two, they they didn't look this good. So they've they've really stepped up to the plate at the beginning of this season, and they also weren't this good at kickoff. It's not the case of like, oh, they just ran into some really top teams and T1 are bad. They are improving, and that's pretty incredible. Yeah, it's actually because I'm glad you mentioned that because when they were the crazy raccoon core, once they got picked up by DFM, I went back and watched some of the games, and it was very apparent that they. They wanted to play a paper rex style, but they just weren't paper rex, which is funny because in one of the coach content videos we got to do, Astel asked exactly that to the other coaches. He was like, does anyone else's players always ask if they can also play like paper rex? Because 
Like DFM asked me that all the time, and I have to tell them that we're not paper racks. Yeah. And that was a conversation <laughs> we really had. So at that point, I was like, oh man, like I don't know how you deal with that. And then they came out and they played nothing like that. They they created yeah. their own playbook entirely. Uh, and it's just really, really impressive. I mean, I'm glad uh, all the things that Sylvia mentioned because we were no like packing up everything. Everything was a new idea. It was their own variation. Also, I mean, obviously the composition itself, right? Not using the jet and moving on to the race, things like that, playing to their strengths for sure. Yeah. yeah. And even T1, like playing to the disadvantages of the comp. Like I'm just seeing um, Sire just go over towards middle all the time because they obviously they can't clear him out with like a drone or a recon. So it's not like T1 played bad against it at all. They were even trying to exploit the fact that they had no server and it was just um, essentially just a KO. So, this yeah, is yeah. this is really where the comeback began. DFM played an all right attack half. I think they really picked it up towards the end of their attack half, but it wasn't anything really lighting the world on fire. And to me, this is where the snowball really oh. kicked off. This this camera is just so nice though. This camera to spot legs, like every team is gonna every team is gonna copy this camera. The amount the amount of info that it gets. And I might just yap for a little bit because th this round is just so <laughs> sick. Um so this guy just fully sends it in. He's he's in a lot of utils so he just tries to get a kill. But this is what impresses me the most. The fact that like this is so coordinated and they save the cipher cage. Like the cipher doesn't panic. KO flash in and they Ooh. save the cipher cage Gosh. for this. So it's yeah. just so good. Like the ciphers back a site, lets them take the space, and then it's just it's just all the util around that one push, and it's just so well organized. I was just man, I, I watched this and I was like, damn, that was like really impressive. You rarely see like a cipher save that cage. Normally, it's when they're coming in, they'll just pop it to, to delay and then take some jewels. This is just making the most out of every bit of util. It was so nice to watch. And usually, the, you kind of have that situation the opposite, where the KO is not anchoring deep on backside, ready to flash somebody else through the CT smoke. Normally, the flood is coming in from CT with like, or, or you're flashing in order for the backside player to play off or something. What I loved is that they were taking concepts that other teams have used, but they weren't copying them. They were adding their own variation to what was going on. That is sick. That is a sign of a team that's going to go places because they're not just having to wait for other people to come up with good ideas and yoink them. They're actually putting their own twist on everything that's happening. Uh, the, there were another two rounds as well. Uh, listen, let's just make this a little VOD review session, man. <laughs> because <laughs> round 18 was nuts too. They've got this anti-KO setup that you were popping off about, Sliggy, as well. Yeah, so it's essentially just uh, the the Cypher over towards A, and there's a trip that he... Uh, sorry, Cypher over, to, yeah, Cypher over towards A, but he has a trip on B. And then same with Viper over towards B, but has the smoke over towards A that you would normally see um, Omens do. And it's, it works a little bit better with the Viper smoke because it's just a little bit bigger. So it it's actually so gives good. the people on uh, like at the top, um, on top of Plat, it just gives them a better angle. And you see these two here, just full util out because when the KO makes the sound of his ult, essentially they have a time to just throw their util. Perfect so they, pause in the round. Yeah, I guess perfect pause in the round. <laughs> so they'll, the, the ult comes out, they'll nade, they they flash with the omen, and then literally just the, the viper smoke just gives them cover. So you can either play in it, play at the back of sight, and then the people top of heaven just have uh, like free jewels. They can just take one-on-ones. It was that, very impressive. Was that the round where the, so he does throw the nade, and then May's not the one getting kills, but the backup arrives in time as well because everyone has to wait for the paint shells, things like that? I think yes. it might have been, but... Th this this round was where Sire and Isu, I think it was, just sent it into hell, though. You watch their pathing, T1. They don't really take a pause oh. here, thinking about the fact that the orb is up and that's a bad time for them. They just wrap Jenny and they run into the back of sight mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they just, they kind of just get melted. You watch it in the replay as well. And there's, there, there's really no hope that they were winning that attack round. Yeah. So they, they played this anti KO setup three times and they won every single round. They played yeah. it once when the KO was one away for an orb, just like, just come take the orb. But that's how confident they are with it. Like most people will be like, okay, let's stop him getting this orb and go aggro. They're just like, this is, this setup is just unreal. It's working in practice, obviously. And they were so heavy reliant on it. And the good thing is they can also just switch it around to do like a, an opposite version if they started to get anti as well. So yeah, I love to see this. And this defense was just so nice. It really was. Uh, and then the next, so. After round 16, I think it was an eco that they won. After round 18, it was an eco that they won. And then I think after round 20, it was an eco too. So you have like three huge rounds all demonstrating something very different. A B defense where it's like support for the flood. An A defense where it's an anti-KO just anchor the site kind of setup. 
And then round 20, they come out of a timeout, actually, I think it was, from T1. Because T1 were trying to figure out how do we not let this map slip away. And immediately DFM are like, nah, we're not going to let you do anything that you've been talking about in the timeout. We're actually just going to run at you. But it was something different. Again, like, I've not seen any team do this kind of setup. Because most teams don't play the Rays on the map, I suppose, as well. But yeah, this was so well done. It's like an iteration of the yeah. normal the normal flash omen. Uh, like, normal flash and then omen would just TP and then duel. But they have a, I mean, they have a better KO flash. Like, he does it from closer so he can get involved as well and throw some extra util. And they put the nade to get anyone close. It's, it's just very yeah. well thought and through. If it's a reaction towards B, you have two players over towards B with a pit and a trip inside mm -hmm. the trip. So you're ready in case they go for a react on the other side and all you hit is the like one lurker on the other side of the map it's so good like they yeah. immediately force t1 to play at their tempo no matter what t1 do in a response to this round and, and the execution is so precise yeah what you just mentioned though i think that's where you can really tell that okay this wasn't a fluke right because normally yeah you can have set plays like you can have all the set plays you want you can have all the ability linking you want to just take over gelato for one round things like that and you can find a good timing but the fact that it's done with extra steps in mind so that if this timeout comes out a different way we still got backup you still have the cam to check for mid you have all the things to make sure your win conditions are still in line that's how you know that this team is not messing around and then the fact that that they didn't only win Ascent, right? They still are able to do it again on Sunset. And even on Lotus, I actually think they were the ideas were all there. It's just that the execution was a bit more lacking and T1 was much more fundamentally sound because they're so comfortable on that map. Uh, but even T1, uh, I heard that in the uh, post-match press conference, they even said, like, even on Lotus, we think DFM had better reads than we did, right? So just giving the credit that DFM was full prepped on all of these maps, yeah. which I think is a very scary aspect for some of these other teams. Yeah. DFM only had one game this week and T1 had two. Oh, I wanted to point out as well, actually, right? People in your chat, Sliggy, while I'm watching the game, are right. saying that I need to detonate my house. Yeah, I've given notice on my house. Yeah, I bought the TNT already. But I'm not blowing the fucker up yet. The, the agreement was that it was DFM had to get top of the damn group. I, uh, Kurt, I need you to find the evidence because the people don't believe me. I, 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 Kurt has the clip. Kurt has the clip. You know, Review the evidence! The four of us decide to make a pact that we will all do something very silly and embarrassing if Detonation wins. <laughs> Who does group Detonation win. play against, sorry? If they win, win the whole group! group? They play, yeah, if they win the whole group, that will If do Detonation something. win the whole group, I'll detonate my house! I'll blow <laughs> the whole thing up! No, no, no. TNT underneath no. the building, Minecraft style, this shit's going to the roof! I'll detonate for Detonation! Thank you. <laughs> there we go. So so I don't have to blow up my house yet. The, the, we're, we're still fine. Do you think there's any chance, before we move on to the T1 Paperx game, that DFM can actually do something like that? Is it is it in they any way possible that they could overtake group. DRX and Paperx? But, but you have to remember that this is cross-group, right? So they don't actually have to beat Paperx or DRX. No, true. They just have to have a better map differential. And... I mean, sure, it starts off with a 2-1, so I guess you're a little bit on the safe side for now, Sideshow, but quite frankly, I mean, DRX has had some historically comical upset losses every now and then, and Paper Rex, it's all, they're gonna, they're gonna get through it. They look just fine, obviously, with Jing returning, but uh, who knows? Yeah, it, it's a tough ask. Look at, just look at the group and look at the map differential for the teams that are 1-0 right now, because they're currently, they're, they're off to a bad start with their, with their series being so close, but, um, I mean, even Zeta that dropped the map, they're still plus 14 yeah. when it comes to yeah, the differential. That's true. Like, yeah. This, yeah. this is a group that's going to come down to tiebreakers, 100%. If you look yeah. at the, 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 the record that all these teams are currently on at the moment, it's 100% it going like to come that. down to tiebreakers, I think, for at least for the third, third place play in, in playoffs. So they, they'd have a tough time of it. I think your house is safe, Josh, and I think my ass cheek is safe too. <laughs> so I definitely <laughs> yeah. put a tattoo on the line for the event yeah. becoming top of the group. <laughs> and a um, little bit of poo coming out, coming into my pants there when you guys are fucking detailing all the things they're doing well. And I'm watching it, and I'm like, Ooh, okay, but I, I think we're okay. Like, they, they'd have to come top of the group. It would have to be uh, I don't, I, like a biblical level event, I think. There would have to be the bubonic plague version two occurring in in Seoul, South Korea, and everybody everybody was fucking bedridden, with the exception of DFM, uh, for, for that to be the case. Here's now if they win next week, though, if they win on uh, next week, 
then you're in real trouble, right? Because one of the uh, worries that a lot of people have. Shen Chi, <laughs> the finalists of Madrid, Chobra! Yes, I will be shitting and pissing! I will, I will be losing it! <laughs> they got their confidence. They got that one win. That's all that was blocking them. You know, we, we talked about that one win being important. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if they if they beat Gen G, then we've got issues. Absolutely, I agree with you. Yeah, well, well, I do want to point out though as well. Dead and Nature, the Pacific's got a really unusual format this year. I didn't realize how odd it was last week when we were talking about it. But a lot of the teams play twice in the week, like tons oh. of the teams. So America's every week there's one team that doesn't play, and that's how they even things out. EMEA there's one team that plays twice, and that's how they even it out. Pacific. Like, half the teams play twice, and that's how they even it out. So there's, like, tons more matches happening at the beginning of... Or is this just for the first... No, because it's happening next week as well. There's it's, a lot of double It should matches. be the same every week. I believe we have the same number of matches every week. Right. I think we have right. two matches a day for every day, and we have four days a week all the way up until a playoff, so... Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, yeah, you guys are condensing it then. But that also means that there are some weeks where you have like a trap game like this. Because I think T1 would certainly have prepared more in the game against Paper Rex because it was first and because Paper Rex are top three and because they would consider that to be like a big win that they really needed to prep for compared to the game against DFM where maybe they were just like, yeah, well, we're good enough to I mean, walk over them. Well, yeah. then they should have beaten Paper Rex. What can I say? No. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not empathizing with them necessarily. I'm just saying, do you think that that played a role I, in it? Well, do you think that's something we should be paying attention to throughout I, the season? Um, I, well, yes, to to a certain extent. Because the other thing is, is obviously, especially in the first week, some other things that uh, we were concerned might come into play is, for instance, uh, like the Team Secret or a Q game, Team Secret, got to get used to the new stage, et cetera, et cetera, right? They got one game out of the way. Sure, it wasn't a win, but now they're, they've been there, done that. RQ coming in cold again, things like that. Uh, and then, of course, like you said, maybe you're focusing more on one of your matches. Meanwhile, the other team gets to, you know, watch your latest VODs, and maybe that adds in a little extra. So I'm sure it has an effect. I mean, is it something that we should read into too much? I don't think so, but... Like, let's say if it really does come down to these crazy tiebreakers, then yeah, I mean, one of these, you know, weeks where you had to play the double match, that yeah. could be the difference maker for sure. Um, on T1 Paper Rex, then, is there, is, is there something interesting to pull from this game too? It was our first time seeing Jing. That was a lot of fun to watch Jing back on the stage. I was a little disappointed that T1 weren't able to get it across the line because there were some pretty close maps here. But um, frankly, I care about this game a lot less now that T1 have <laughs> also lost to the <laughs> FM. Because I, I think T1, they definitely, you could feel that they put a lot of their prep into this matchup. I mean, I didn't watch the DFM game, but just based off what you guys are saying. And I thought, yeah. I felt like they were actually going pound for pound in terms of matching the tempo of Paper X, which is the number one win con for, for a team like Paper X is them being able to run over teams that just can't keep up with that tempo. But they, they played against them quite a bit. They're familiar with their game. You know, they're not, they're not completely unaware of it. But they still couldn't pull it over the line against a Paper X squad that, you know, has essentially just thrown Jing into the roster again um, with very little prep. I mean, they are plugging and playing him in. And you, you could feel that. I mean, it, wasn't, it didn't look like anything was preset. Anything was planned out too much. But the one thing that was there was... The initiation with Jing and the coordination that he had with the rest of his team was immediately back. Like the chemistry, the team chemistry was fucking off the charts. You could tell. Like Jing wasn't hitting all the time in terms of his shots, but the timings of which when he would enter and Forsaken would perfectly swing like out of yeah. the cove on bind. Well, mm -hmm. little elements like that were. It was like watching the, just just paper. It's like they hadn't missed a beat from last year. So you've done the cinema hands. You you've literally yeah, it done is. the. It is. Oh, it, it was, was like watching. Oh, it was like all cinema. <laughs> Absolute cinema, dude. It was. It was. It was fucking awesome to see them back as well. Because I mean, I'm a big Jing fan. I mean, I'm a big Paper X fan as well. Of this this core roster as they as they exist in this current iteration. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it felt good watching this watching this game because all oh, those little elements that, were coming exactly. together. The chemistry was there, and now it's just the case of if you give this team time. What else are they going to cook up now that they know that they've got Jing back into the roster? Um, yeah. Because they were looking scary last year. And um, that, that was one of the major things that I was always, you know, disappointed and annoyed about was, you know, that we didn't get to see Paper X evolve past the point where they were reaching these really deep tournament finishes of last year. But now, okay, they've had, they don't have as much time as other teams, but I think it's going to be really exciting to watch them evolve over the course of this entire year in Pacific. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I back everything. will be fun. 
Yeah, I, I back everything you say, especially like the main thing that kind of makes sense when you say that is like when if I was just like singling out the Vi, the Vi looks so much more comfortable. It just mm. felt like there was such a like good synergy, the, like the flashes, and he was just it just felt like the they actually just all together knew exactly what to do, and it's just <laughs> they just thrive in chaos, and it and it yeah. just felt like um yeah they they just know what everyone's gonna do, and I think even first kills he was just like never never giving up first kills, never doing anything. I think he was like six and zero or five and zero in terms of first kills. Um, yeah, so I just thought it was, it was very impressive. So I, yeah, I was o- yeah five all. Overall, I mean, I think that's the biggest thing is that I think this is a good reminder to everyone that it was it was never really going to be the question of like Manyet versus Jing. It's just that Jing is kind of Paper Rex incarnate, right? Like he's become Paper Rex to a certain extent, so that he actually helps control the tempo maybe more than Forsaken or something or Devi or Mind Freak, you know, any of those guys uh, up to a certain point. Uh, and and that just showed. I mean, Jing still top frags the entire match, uh, and it went to even overtime on bind, things like that. So while he's been out of it, you know, Coach Alex said before the match that, you know, Jing was trying to get used to getting back into the groove, like he was having some trouble in certain scrims and things like that, uh, but obviously didn't miss a beat once it came to being on stage. On the flip side for T1, I mean, I do think I agree. I think they definitely showed that they prepped a lot, and then also that they were willing to match the tempo. But what I think got to them was once... They lost like one or two rounds where they were trying to match the tempo and the chaos, right? Then they would either go into one of two things. Either they would way overheat and just try to ego peak everything, or they would start to play real slow, hoping that that would be the trap for Paper Rex. And like you just said, like you just can't let, you know, you can't let that tempo drop. And I wonder if that's just a matter of nerves. I don't know if it's a matter of, you know, if it's the teamwork, etc. But it just seems to be this thing that plays them every time they meet Paper Ranks because they come out strong, they come out with good prep, and then they just can't close out the map or the best of three. Mm. Uh, my only disappointment with T1 in that match was their attack side macro on Lotus. I felt like with that comp, you should be owning the rubble fight. They never went there. They never mm. pushed something off your line when he was playing op. You're never winning on the attack side of Lotus if you fail to do those things. So, yeah, yeah, I, I've, I've lost some of my T1 faith after the Paper X game and then also the DFM loss, to be honest with you. But there we, there we go. And, and extra, yeah, that's unfortunate. I didn't realize that he had a bit of yeah. a, an injury on his hand as well. But he was kind of popping off when he was playing Chamber. He just got lost a little bit while he was playing some of his other roles, like the Cypher on Sunset today. He, uh, he was getting exposed a little bit. But, you know, th- that can be a very distracting thing to play with, I'm sure. It doesn't just affect your aim. also affects how you think. Let's move on to the next topic, though, because we've spent five hours talking about DFM <laughs> here. So we've got, we've got another match that I want to I get into. RRQ against Team Secret. We were fairly split in terms of our predictions, and I had high hopes for Team Secret. Chobra, you had high hopes for RRQ. In the end, it was an OT game in the final map, and RRQ was able to close it out. But it's also been a pretty bad week for Secret. Do you see these two teams on different tra- trajectories um different trajectories yes i think so i actually think at the end of the day the result speaks exactly to what everyone was thinking like i took a look at everyone else that was doing tier list etc we talked about it like this match was going to be a 50 50 obviously the score was a 2-1 it went to overtime but also i think the result team like plays that we saw were still 50 50 but i agree that it's it's different trajectories whereas team secret feels like a team where it's they're still relying a lot on some individual carry power they're still relying on very very old default ideas you know that you seemingly like the asia region overall seemingly got from the old drx style things like that where they're waiting for you know utility checks things like that you cycle through and then you start to work off of that and then if that doesn't work out then you have to rely on the individual carry power whereas rq at least were trying to continue with their own tempo that they were trying to create and what RQ I think did better than kickoff was that they were much better about not like overheating. Um, obviously, there were still some cases, uh, and then also big roll swaps for RQ as well. And, and I think that has helped Xfero get way more comfortable trying to just create more space on his own. Elmi more bit of hit or miss uh, on the initiator role. Uh, so I think RQ. I guess the the point is is that RQ looks like they. They are trying to grow. They're just hitting road bumps. Whereas Team Secret, we just still don't know where they're headed because the way they played right. against DRX and RQ were kind of similar and they didn't get a match win on either one. Mm. Yeah, and they, they look very strong on there. I like when they go like uh, and they explore these comps. Like Split, they had a... I was looking at the comp and I was like, oh, I'm not too sure about this one. But then I kind of actually saw the ideas that they had and I was like, actually, this is the one. And I just feel like um, teams, <laughs> like teams struggle when they, they play against... Um, 
like new comps like this and it takes a while to adjust and it felt like they're just relying on the kind of normal standard comps and everyone's used to playing against that and even like icebox there does their comp does have a big weakness about going b i mean they were just spamming a the whole time um so yeah i think maybe they could be like a little bit um bolder with, with some of their picks if, if it has like good thought behind it but it could also be a time issue. They might have tried that and it might have just been failing in practice. So we don't really know. But I mean, this was a this was a close game. This could have gone 50-50. Um, and it was just like, especially in overtime, it's when Jemkin got the ace, right? To kind of yeah. just get him to, that was nuts, <laughs> man. So there's just like little things like that that were just kind of edging them over. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of still, even though Team Secret went like 0-2, I'm, I'm actually not that worried about them. Uh, it, it, they just, I don't know. I think I think some of the comps could just be be a little bit or just like add some new stuff in that people haven't seen because it is just very like rigid you can yeah. just, you feel like you know what's coming within like the first 20 30 seconds i, I and i think that's the thing is that i, I agree it's not that you should be worried if you're a team secret fan you shouldn't necessarily be worried about the potential results but it's also there's not anything particularly exciting right to look forward to it's still the same flow chart it's a matter of at the end of that flow chart are you hitting your shots when it matters or not uh, again, I'm not saying that they're relying on just aim duels, but because everyone knows what to prep for at that point, you sure. really have yeah. to hit your shots because the prep is there from your opponents. So that's the thing is that Team Secret, in, in my head then, as someone who wants to get excited about the league and the growth of everyone and other teams are experimenting like DFM and creating yeah, their own versions. Exactly. Yeah, and then you're suddenly thinking, oh, Team Secret? Yeah, they're like, they'll probably. The most expected thing right now for Team Secret is that they will probably be that team again that determines whether the other teams get into playoffs or not, right? They're going to kind of be that cutoff line, the standard. Dude, this looks rough, though. The schedule does not <laughs> look great for them. Like, you would look at a DFM game usually and be like, okay, mm -hmm. that's a freebie. Secret should be fine to get some momentum going when they play against DFM or Talent. And now I'm looking at this and I'm like, this, <laughs> this looks like That's a lot rough, of L's man. on the horizon. The, the game against Secret, though, should be fun. I think, th is that one of our Preds this week, actually? Uh, I feel Zeta like it was. I can't remember. Yeah, Zeta Secret. I think it was. But I, 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 yeah, I think it was. Think it so yeah. we, we won't discuss that, that too much. I actually, I, mean, I want to, oh, go on, go on. Yeah, the, no, that, sh that should be fun. Uh, I think that should be fun just because Zeta, Zeta showed a lot of promise. But I also just want to just take this chance to clear my name a little bit as well, because... <laughs> I was getting just bombed because I pr predicted secret on the official preds on broadcast for secret versus RRQ. And I, Kurt, can you bring up this tweet from Voxize, who's the analyst of RRQ? <laughs> so, so RRQ has begged me all last year to stop predicting them because they won the matches I didn't predict them. And so I just thought I'd throw a Hail Mary since it's Team Secret and RRQ, and I predicted Team Secret. So from here on out, for anyone who thinks I lost faith, it has nothing to do with that. I've just succumbed to the curse factor of VCT, and I will never You didn't be. lose faith, you gained superstition. That's what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't let my parents hear that. <laughs> they will be too happy about it. But that is exactly what happened. <laughs> okay. Well, I want to go. I want to look at the other side. Our RQ's upcoming game. They play against Bleed. So let's talk about Bleed. Everyone and their nan wants to talk about Bleed <laughs> because of Yay. And I, as much as they lost this match, I was actually pleasantly surprised with what I saw. It looked and I, I, I'm sure that's not a particularly popular take because people love dragging down. People love toppling statues. This is what I've noticed. <laughs> if, if there is a player that was at the top of the game and they end up underperforming, people love fucking pull the statue down, stomp on it, break it to pieces. <laughs> they were never good. They're washed. Um, but I actually thought that this version of Bleed with Rettler and Zest had some sensible ideas. The execution was off and they were slow, but I could see what they were going for. And it was just worlds better than what they put together last yeah. time with that dysfunctional roster, in my opinion. That, that was my biggest issue with this team is that they're just operating too slow to be a top contender, I think, in Pacific they're, with their decision-making. But that's not, that's normal, right? That's, that's to be expected when they're making so many changes. And in theory, there should be a lot of language barrier issues. But they take... They take you know, longer to come to the right conclusion when it comes to when you watch a really, really top level team and there's no hesitancy in terms of the way that they clear a particular area of the map because they understand how important it is on a on a retake, for example. 
um, or they make the right call from a macro sense where they're like, they, they get the read on where the players are, but then when everybody is finally on the same page and they're making the right decision to like, I don't know, hit C on Lotus, the rotations have already come in and they're way too late with it. Um, so maybe that's something that can be solved with, with time, but yeah, for me, it's just I, the current, at the at current form, the, the players individually, I've got no problem with them. They, they seem to be hitting. The, fund the fundamentals are a little bit off, but that's to be expected because they've just made changes. Um, and the general decision-making just is a little bit too slow. Um, whether or not I can be corrected, I don't know. But you're right, they do look better. People love to clown on this team. They love to clown on Ye. Ye, I thought, was looking way better. And, that's, and it's in a role where he is the primary duelist player, where he's the one who having to, has to take that initiative, which in before, when we've ever seen Ye being at a world-class level. He's had Victor to int and create space like the human fucking drone for him. <laughs> like, it's, that, that's not the case yeah. here. He's having to really rely, I think, on his team setting him up with utility rather than an actual fucking body being, being thrown at a site. Um, so, yeah, things are kind of stacked against Ye in terms of him having a good performance, yet he still played all right individually. So there's definitely promise here with Bleed. Um, but... Unfortunately, Pacific has leveled up overall, and it's no longer just a two-team region. And so you're going to be, find it really hard-pressed, I think, to try and maybe even squeak into the lower section of playoffs. Um, in, I'm not sure. Maybe not for their group. Maybe it might be an easier well, task because of their group again. But, yeah, I don't know what you guys think. Yeah, I just, before, before anyone else speaks up, I do want to add, obviously, there is that rule, right, where you, everyone has to have at least minimum two wins. Yeah. yeah. And that's the, that's the topic at hand right now for Pacific, where it's like, well, is anyone other than Genji going to get two wins in yeah. Alpha? Because that <laughs> yeah. might not happen with DFM striking back this hard. Yeah. Um, um, so, sorry, I'll come in. I, I just wanted to talk about like the, <laughs> I'm going like the opposite from Team Secret here. I want, I want them both to meet and kind of find a middle ground. I, dude, I, I didn't really like their comps, like solo, solo bind. Dude. They had a solo brim, right? I find that that's an absolute nightmare to play. And then we go to Icebox and they had the solo harbor. When, when I look at this team and I kind of look at all the Pacific, if you actually just did like teams on paper, I'm pretty sure like this team on paper, like is a lot higher than most of these teams and they should be able to skill diff. And I think like if you're experimenting, first of all, personally, I would be trying to put more more like chamber in if we are going to be going for experiments and trying to bolt stuff. Um, but but then second of all, it's just like surely we can just rely on stuff we know that is good and then just frag out heavier because uh, mm. like if I if I put bleed and team secrets side by side, like Envy's the only player that I'm like fair enough like for sure like probably probably better. But everyone else, I feel like like bleed individually. Have have like at least three players that are like legit fragging heavy out. So I think if you have have comfort with a lot of them instead of like these crazy ideas, which are hard to play, like bind solo brim is hard to play. There's a reason why everyone just has like the viper. It creates so much pressure. It's so much better on defense. Um, and same with the harbor. Like the harbor, especially on attack, like the harbor uh, solo icebox. It's hard to create a lot of pressure. Like, there's a reason that Viper is so well played. It's so good at stopping power on defense and delay. And then they just felt like they missed a lot of that stuff. And just... I, I didn't... Go, go on, Chuba. Sorry. Yeah, I just want to add in, in case anyone's wondering, you know, if you're trying to cope and find a reason why they might not be doing that, there isn't because they also picked up one of the smartest Viper players that was on the market, right? In Zest. Sure. So, mm, yeah. so like, there is a world that. where you can still play the Viper on any of these maps, and Darion's been flexing around a lot, so you could still have him be the one who picks up the Gecko or anything like that. I mean, I don't, I'm not saying that that's going to work. Not every new agent <laughs> is going to work for a flex player, but, like, he seems to have been willing, right? So yeah. there, there's options here for sure for Bleed. I didn't so, actually think it was a comp diff, though. Uh, when it actually came down to it, I felt like it was an execution diff. When I, I agree with your points on the harbor, but I think I only saw one round where really it made the difference. And apart from that, the rounds were getting owned by other stuff. Like, I think on Icebox, they had a really bad understanding of how the map flows hmm. in general. When they were playing the defense side, Ye was getting caught over by B a lot, and they were trying to set Ye up on solo angles and then four stack the other side of the site, and then Ye was getting caught. They weren't, like, Ye himself, I don't think, was really reading the timings very well. No. He, he was, was... There was instances <coughs> where he's misusing his dash, and he's trying yeah. to hold, like, solo on B yellow, and he's trying to get a read in terms of... Just based off instinct. It's not based off sound cues or maybe some comments from his teams, but well, he'll also, waste he's his dash. A 
And I feel like one of the meta understandings is that almost always you're going to need to have, if you're the vi- if you're the jet playing over towards yellow, you need to be thinking about the knife timing because yeah. the knife is the big piece of utility they use to clear yellow. And th- that was not even part of what Bleed were thinking about on their defense. So they weren't doing anything that really made sense based on the timings that Talon were using around the map. And that to me indicates a big like meta misunderstanding of what's happening and i think that that was an enormous issue for them things like this were just happening all the time Mm. before you even get to the harbor having any impact so i think they've got some some fundamental stuff to try to understand there with the team but considering that they're a brand new roster i i came away with a good impression because they'd set the bar in the floor (laughs) but i thought that the actually the individual level i thought was quite quite poor as well compared to what you would like if you're if you're getting yay on jet on yeah. icebox you want the guy to be going nuclear and like actually understanding the game from a jet's point of view and i felt like that wasn't there he wasn't getting he wasn't being anywhere near as mobile as we see other jet players being and that has to be part of the defense system right you can't yeah. just run away from B- be yellow if nobody's filling in the gap so there has to be some overall team understanding but that layer of it was just missing, so he wasn't being able to get as aggressive on the defense sides. They weren't really setting him up with utility to fight, which they could have been doing because they had flashes with the comp, but instead he was just kind of getting posted in areas, mm-hmm. and that was that was it. And then, the, I mean, the raise was like, it was okay, but again, it's not, it's not Ye coming out there carrying the games, like paying a million dollars to get this guy on the roster so that he wins you games. And I thought that Zest, I, I, it's the first time I've ever seen Zest be bad on an agent too. I didn't like his gecko on buy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so that's, these are the problems for me. I know that I was kind of given the cope earlier about how I quite liked it and it was better <laughs> ideas and that kind of thing, but there were still so many problems with what I was witnessing. Um, I'm just willing to give it some time because they are very new together. The yeah. only thing is, is uh, well, I want to just say two things. First of all, I don't want to put words in Sliggy's mouth, but I think if I understood correctly, I think what Sliggy was saying was basically kind of agreeing with you as well, Sancho, in that if it's too hard to do that with your current comp, you could have an easier way out, right? With things like the Viper, where it's much easier to create that space, the timings, et cetera, where you'll have a better understanding. But on top of that, then going back to what Bren was saying, I know you guys are trying to say that, well, maybe there's hope. It's just because they had these roster changes, et cetera. But Bleed played just as slow, if not slower, at Ascension last year as well. And the reason they won so much mm. is that they had reads on how their opponents would make mistakes, like how their opponents would make unforced errors rather than forced errors, right? And yeah. they would just wait and capitalize. And I think right now, even the only reason maybe that this even went 2-1 is because they have individuals like Ye, Zest, and Scary who are so good at their individual role to create those openings despite it being pretty easily read and the timing being very slow. So so is this Don't. overall style shift going to happen within a year? I'm a little doubtful because if they were playing mm. like that at Ascension, I assume that's kind of the core identity of the coaching style. And also Scary was still a very big core of that team, right? And now he's Wait, the how, IPL is, as well. Is, are there, is it only two players that were even from that Ascension team now? <laughs> Yes. I think it is, isn't it? Because it's not Zest, yes. it's not Ye, and it's not Rettler because Rettler yep. was on the team before the Ascension run. So, yep. Yeah, he wasn't part of yeah. the uh, Ascension win. Yeah. Don't, it, don't get me wrong, though. I don't. Be playing slow is not bad. It's not a bad thing sure. inherently in Valorant. It's the it's not it's playing slowly and inefficiently is the problem. Yes. Because the high tempo is good if you're all in sync because it means you can make a lot of good like you can make a lot of macro decisions around a map at a in the given time that you've got on a round. But when you're playing slow and you're inefficient, at most you're like pressuring one area and then maybe ending on another and that's it. When really good teams that play slow, they 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 rinse every second that they have in a round. Teams like Navi are excellent at playing the map in terms of their to slow play. Um, and it's because they're really efficient in terms of the way they have a plan of action when they go into a round of what they want to achieve, which is creating pressure somewhere to pull rotations. And then the rest of the, the rest of the, the team just understands inherently what they need to do in that moment to, to get the most out of the round. And you they also have bleed. really good fast hits that they occasionally throw yep. in to mm-hmm. change they, they the tempo. They alternate it, right? Alternating yeah. the tempo so that when you condition for slow play, it really throws teams off guard when you go fast again. Um, so so yeah. do, you, do you think that Bleed have got hope? Can I get a hope check? <laughs> I I think I listen. I think they they. Okay, I mean, does um, 
Does Rettler play anything other than like the <laughs> the Sentinel Viper stuff for them? Does Darion play anything other than Sentinel? Like, are, are they willing to flex? Because genuinely, yeah, what, what Sliggy said be. ignited synapses in my brain about Chamber. Because genuinely, I think if you put if Chamber is very playable in this current meta, he is very playable. Teams are doing it. You can cook up. Great stuff on a lot of maps if you want to play the chamber. Put Ye on that roll, find somebody to create space for him, put Zest on the Viper again, I think, as well, and get some initiator players to, to just fling. You don't even need a good duelist player, man. You put me on the fucking roster. Put me on the roster, <laughs> and go. I will lock Neon and Raze, <laughs> and I'll practice my, my little jumping and skipping and hopping into the map, and I will set the I will set Yester the fuck up. I will fucking, I will set that dude up. You don't need anybody good into that role, but I think you need to play towards your strengths, which you know you've got right now, when you've got someone like but, Zest but, and Ye in the team. But also, think of the way that Ye's playing right now is like he was playing chamber when he's yes, playing he's icebox very, yes. jet but the rest of the team still doesn't understand how to set him up they still don't have a good understanding of like that apart from the very basic idea of he is posted here therefore we are going to right. stack over there That's... they don't have the extra layers to rotating around or like bailing him out if he gets under pressure or wrote you know faking like he's on one side of the map and then rotating him over yeah, to another yeah. i mean or getting a mid-round timing for him to walk down tube and set him up after some early pressure <laughs> this on b is, this is the error the layers <laughs> The layers! <laughs> Give me a croissant, not a fucking slice of bread! <laughs> but this is going to happen if, if you change your comps like this. Like, you, we're not relying on the, the comfort of the people. Like, you, yeah. they just bit off too much. Too much. They can't, they can't chew mm, it all. It's yeah. just like... Um, like a really <laughs> thick single slice of bread. Like exactly, the end of a exactly loaf of that. bread. There's no layers, but it's chewy and thick and, oh, but I can't chew it. <laughs> yeah, it, it literally is that. You it need a feels... nice flaky parfait or a croissant. Ah. <laughs> That's what they need. That's what they go wrong. simple. But yeah, I, I just I think split two. I have a lot of faith. But they went the route of instead of like mm. fast fix, let's make this good. They they bit off so much, and it's like, well, you just made your you made your plate huge. Like they got so mm, much yeah. to deal with, new comps, new fundamentals, all of that stuff on on top of getting new people in. So they're still learning like English. Like it's it's a it's a really bold maneuver, and I don't think they're gonna start looking convincing until split two. Like I think Shanghai is off the cards. Bleed are gonna be the new DFM, where people are either rooting for them Whoa. to lose and lose and lose, or rooting for them to Ooh. win their first game. I think that's gonna be the narrative: is that people are gonna be Ooh. tuning in to either hate watch or find the first win for the team. I think it's I gonna mean, be like that. There is a or like a, the, stiff or like KC or something. There's some stiff competition for that in Pacific <laughs> yeah, their own group, well, in fact. So well, I let, don't know. Let's, but... let's flip the tables to talk about a team that did, I think, better than expected. Considering that Flashback had an mm. emergency and had to uh, sit out for these um, first, I don't even know how long, actually. I don't think they said. Um, DRX having to kind of improvise on the fly, put Bane into the roster, maybe before he was even intended, certainly mix around the roles compared to expected. And they looked actually very solid. I was impressed. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I liked, I, I think that this makes a ton of sense for them putting Mako into the position of playing Viper when you have this particular scenario. Because from what I hear, Solo is the, he was doing a lot of individual coaching for Smokes, like for this team. For, for DRX, right? So part of the reason why Mako is so highly rated, part of the reason is why why the Viper plays. Now, why couldn't he do that for when Foxy Nine was playing Viper? I don't know. But I think Mako definitely understands the game well enough, I think, to just adjust into the Viper role, even though you play it slightly differently. But he understands the role well enough. And then it seems like Bane has taken to the role of, of just Omen, fitting in really nicely. And you're putting Foxy Nine into a role where you can literally tell him exactly what to do and what the, his decision making, and then you can just lean on his raw aim. He's he's naturally tethered, leashed up like the GTA Five dog. We love that reference here. We fucking love it. <laughs> but he's le he's leashed up naturally because um, you you have to be when you're playing Sentinel. You you're not you can't you don't have as much freedom, which has always been the biggest problem of Foxy Nine when he was playing on Duelist is that he didn't really know when to stop. And when he was playing on Viper, it felt like he didn't really understand the role intuitively too well. But I feel like. Now that they've put him onto that role, you can just tell him, here's the setups, here's your role for this round, here's what we want you to do. And then he can take it on his own initiative and just rely on that, that raw aim. I think it's a really good game plan, and a lot of teams are just leaning into just putting heavy aimers into that position um, to, so that they can really just flex and roll. It looks promising. You can tell it's, it's slapdash in terms of the, the roster being thrown together and the ideas aren't there. But 
again, it's like another example where I look at PaperX and I'm excited to see the evolution of the team over the course of the of the year. Same with this DRX roster, I think. They've kind of stumbled into the right the right course of action almost because I don't know if Foxy9 on the on the Viper would have done it for them. You, you did say solo earlier as the coach that you were giving credit for, but I assume you mean Glow. Um, who's oh, been sorry, yes, the Glow. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that threw me off. Sense, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my bad, my bad. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it has. They, they just take Julis and turn them into good Smokes players. It's like that's yeah. it's one of the best things that DRX does. I, I was amazed that this team was working so well whilst basically improv though. Yeah. They, they were, yeah. yeah, it looked quite good. Um, I, th I think a big thing, <laughs> I, I hate that this has kind of become the meme theme of 2024, but I think a big thing is Bane also seemingly really upgraded the atmosphere. And I'm not saying that there, it's like a, it's not a one-to-one -one comparison between like Flashbang and Bane or anything like that, but like Bane seems to have such a positive impact on these. Like we've never seen them laughing this much during a match and having the comms to keep up the tempo when they want, things like that. Like, they seem way more fluid. Now, I think a big part of this is obviously now they're used to, you know, overall the big changes on this roster with Foxy9, you know, continuing to be in the starting five, et cetera, et cetera. And maybe even, and maybe even a big part of it is that they've really fallen now, right? So that pressure's off of them of, like, we can't ever fall. Like, they, they've really been crushed. They didn't go to Masters Madrid, et cetera. And maybe that takes off a little bit of the pressure as well. But whatever it is, is they look a lot happier to be playing the game, right? It's not like they're taking a test every time anymore. Um, like, Termi's <laughs> taking off his suit. He's wearing his uniform now. He's in short <laughs> yeah. sleeves. It's insane. Change. Yeah, and he's like calling timeouts like nature is healing Derek's is returning to the top of Korea like who knows what's next but honestly it's a good fit and I think also um whatever like I haven't had a chance to talk to him but whatever it is I have to imagine Bane's just happy to be given the shot he's also willing to flex he's been flexing around a little bit more and more and so he could be the answer that they need once they moved away from RB right someone who's just willing to take on the role of whatever so that their star players can be on their comfort roles uh, and I'm, I'm in full agreement I'm excited because now they're you know doing things like picking up the tempo and then Mako still not looking like he was lost like he did in kickoff when they were trying to play faster uh, and try to go for these contact plays things like that uh and the biggest thing is for sure i mean foxy nine like he's getting the mvp here uh, in these matches because of his performance and a lot of that is like you said the game tells him where to go and what to do because he can't move any further and that's a huge buff it's um it's like the fast track way of getting discipline as well having yeah. a duelist and putting them on sentinel and like on defense it's like you you will lose the round if you do mad stuff and then literally on attack like you're saying like the dog on the leash just let him off the leash a couple of rounds and be like all right man you, you can make some plays right now like you've got a bit of freedom it's such a perfect way and, and i saw that with a lot of his stuff even saw him taking some risks and then like falling back afterwards when you just yeah, know that yeah. he wanted to go forward. And I'm like, yep. damn, he's like fast learning discipline. It's, it's really impressive. Don't play it again, and Kurt. Then... For God's sake, <laughs> yeah, don't play the, it again. What the hell? Going for the body shots? You're savage. <laughs> I mean, um, <laughs> Global were talking in the uh, press conference afterwards that they have a choking problem on stage. They Ooh. were saying that yeah. they have prepped for the game and they knew what they wanted to do and they just fumbled it anyway. I do want to say, I totally see it. I mean, I, when I was watching this game, it seemed like Global actually had some really good reads at the start of every round, especially on Ascent. Like, they looked like they came prepared for this match. And then I would get excited. I'm like, oh, man, they've got the read. They've got the setup. I'm excited for see how it goes. And it just doesn't. Like, it just doesn't happen. Like, they're missing shots. They're missing util, et cetera. Um, but they're clearly executing the ideas. So, I mean, for me personally, like... My problem with Global and Kickoff was that they weren't even showing me their ideas, so that's where I lost faith. This time, at least, they showed me the ideas. They just didn't execute it properly. Um, but I totally believe it. I think that's one of the rare instances when I hear an interview like that, and I don't think it's them coping. I actually think it's true, because I could see that they had done the prep. I could see that they thought they had really good read on, reads on DRX, and it's not even like they were just getting out-aimed. It's like they were making mistakes, right? They were stumbling. They were whiffing, things like that. Yeah, and and this goes down to my thing of just like firepower. If Ross, it, it's the same thing with like Fnatic. If Boss is at the top, you have to worry. If Ross is at the top in this team, like frag wise, you have to worry. It shouldn't be the IGL fragging out. And yeah, so there, there's a lot of a lot of times as well where people are like trying to force plays so much. I, I remember on Ascent, like the overextending, like they have a good read, they have four people over towards B, and then the one person, um, sorry, opposite way around, four people on A, and then the one person over towards. 
B would just like push out to main and then get killed and they can just all run back. And it's like they're all just trying to force plays. Like they want to win so bad and they they're just they're just taking too many risks. And yeah, they need to just they need, they need some more firepower. They, they they need to step up in terms of just like confidence and jewels yeah. and, and don't force it. Like if it's working in practice, which which I'm presuming it is by how some of them are like talking about their games, then do do what you do in practice. You don't need to force issues. Mm. It, it is concerning because with a team like Global Esports, if you lose this year as well, you're setting up like a legacy of being a losing team, and that's very difficult to undo. That's the kind of thing where if you get like caught in that trap, you just have to blow things up and start again because it's so difficult to get yourselves out of the mental rut of like, just one win, just please, just one win, one time. <laughs> um to go back to drx for a moment though if we look at their upcoming matches actually uh they they've got a very interesting setup because they played a double week against fairly easy opponents i mean not the most difficult matches in the world although they were in difficult situations now they are then going to play against t1 and genji the other two top korean teams and they play against those teams when they have double matches so t1 have to prep for two mm. opponents Gen G have to prep for two opponents and drx can just focus on winning the head-to-head -head. I, I think dude good vibes just one opponent to prep for <laughs> drx are back baby no, I, mean, <laughs> okay. I mean they might be back what? <laughs> does t1 has to play double I cast this league and I didn't write. Do you want us to play double matches two weeks in a row? Don't they? I think. Uh, yeah. Well, blah, blah, blah. D yeah. Right. Am I right with that? That's actually ridiculous. Yeah, they do. They do. They play against DRX and then RRQ. Yeah. Holy. Yeah, yeah. Yep. It's uh, it's brutal oh for my. DR for T1. It's not just all their matches early. Yeah. Uh, essentially, yeah, yeah. They're just gonna have a long break before when not they're out. Being well, they, playoffs. Yeah. <laughs> it might be a much longer break than they Dude, thought crazy. it was gonna be. Like, who knows? Yeah. I, but that's crazy yeah. good for DRX, though, right? Like yeah. that sets them up for an amazing beginning to what could have been a very difficult stage. Yeah, that that's actually crazy. Um, yeah, especially because T1's also just not gonna be feeling good after you know this week and. Obviously, some teams deal with that differently, right? Some teams feed off of that, some teams don't, but I'm getting a feeling that T1, like, for, they're definitely not going to be happy at all. I don't know they're going to have an easy time shaking it off. Whether they feed off of it or not is a different question. But I can tell you right now, whatever happens on Saturday between DRS and T1, one of these Korean teams is going to get blown up on the Korean <laughs> online communities for sure, because yeah. neither of them are going to feel good about that loss. Let's go into some of our predictions then, and let's do the update of the Timmy Preds first. The viewers, the match of the week was T1 versus Paper X, and with 85% uh, of the votes, you voted for Paper X! Wow, so you're 3-1 up. Well let's done, go. little Timmies. 3-1. to one. You've actually got a banging record here, little Timmies. So well done. Pat yourself on the back. Yeah. Um, take a look for the community post uh, that's coming up this week, and it'll be the match of the week. Uh, Kurt, do you know what the match of the week is this week? Uh, my vote goes to Gen G Paper X, but I'm not sure. Oh, but we're having the viewers kind we of could, suggest we... it in the comments. Yeah, I like I like y'all suggesting in the comments. Right now, that's my match of the week is Gen G Paper X, but yeah. Okay, yeah, which would be, I mean, that is a fantastic game. Top two versus top three from yeah. Madrid. Um, but that's not the first game that we're going to predict. The first game we're going to predict is one that I mentioned earlier. It's Secret playing against Zeta Division. Very important game for both of these potential mid-table teams to get going. D did I get Secret? <laughs> oh. And to be honest with you all, I didn't feel great about either of these teams, but I'm the only person that went with Zeta. Went secret? Do you want to swap? <laughs> Do you I, would appreciate, I would appreciate support? a little bit of company. Because I'm not feeling great over here. But I feel like you Dude, can't feel that great about either of these two teams, frankly. You can't yeah. feel confident about yeah. a yeah. in either direction. I think that's very fair. I was looking at this, mm. I'm like, oh, I'm not too confident. And then I might still be on like the fact that in kickoff, the Zeta didn't look too good. Uh, and I'm maybe just still on mm. that train. Um, even though they did look a lot better in terms of just Icebox, like actually fixed a lot of their fundamentals and their default and the comps actually made sense. Um yeah, I think in terms of like, I'm just going back to the Team Secret RRQ game and I was like, actually like pretty close. I think that split looks pretty good and I'm just kind of 
vibing with that and the fact that if I just went off kickoff as well, which we had a good amount of data for, Team Secret just looked better. Mm. That's where I'm at. Oh yeah, yeah. Good, good. Sw- did I, did I predate? That was my mistake. I okay. Oh. I, was like, <laughs> I was like, this is. Did I, I double check? <laughs> okay, I will say this is the very first time of many times where you're like, oh, did I pick that? And it was actually wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> so, yeah, normally I'm I glad have I checked picked again. Them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I. I. It's a bit of a coin flip, this one, to be honest. That's why I was so confused. I was like, I might have predated secret. I don't know. I just, um, yeah, let's go Zeta Division. I've just been given yeah. the most unbelievable news. <clears throat> go on. I no. just got a DM from Zeta fan Wyatt River. <laughs> Saying? It follows, I'm not even predding Zeta. You're alone <laughs> on this one, big dog. What? <laughs> No. Why it's not running Zeta Division? The Why, number one Zeta fan has given up hope already after one win against <laughs> Global. Dude, they're looking better. Why? That's crazy. Yeah, that, that's I would assume crazy, it's because cause... Zeta. I think Wyatt expected Zeta to be very, like, Way very better. competent straight out of the gate mm. because yeah. they have so much firepower than they did last year, and they still finished pretty well last year. Yeah. So I think he, his confidence might have just been knocked from kickoff, where really they did they, they did underperform compared to what I was well, expecting. And, and they played and against Global gotta, this week too, man. Like it's well, not they should be exactly. putting those teams to bed, which they did on map one. <laughs> exactly. That's the thing, right? Is that I think you look at the win and you look at how Zeta played separately, and you're like, okay, yeah, this looks hopeful. But then you consider the opponent and how they've been playing, and you're like, well, maybe we shouldn't put too much weight on that because GE definitely looks like they're having a lot more problems catching up to to how things are gonna work. Uh, I personally, that's my biggest thing is that I just don't want to put too much weight. Like I'm, I'm very excited for Zeta, right? I think they'll, they'll grow. I think their, their potential is showing, but, um, I think secret, right? Just off the bat, they, they seem to have a little bit more consistency in the firepower, et cetera. The only difference would be if last plays chamber again, cause he popped off on that sunset. Yeah. yeah. And if that happens again, then secret might be in trouble. Have you ever, have you ever heard the concept of like, if you got a message from somebody and you knew that they were in trouble and being kidnapped? And like, what message would you send to somebody for them to know that it wasn't normal? This is it. That's, that's Guys, Wyatt. I think there might be something really wrong with Wyatt. I think Wyatt might be in trouble right now and we might have to go and search for him because he could have been kidnapped and he's just trying to put out normal messages like, no, this is a really normal message that I'm sending right now. <laughs> the alarm bells are ringing. All I'm saying, the alarm bells are ringing. Uh, let's move on to the next game. The next game, banger of a match. Potential match of the week, although we'll allow you in the comments to uh, to kind of decide whether there's a better one that you would like to suggest. But the next game to predict is Genji playing against Paper Rex. Top two, top three from Madrid. And we've Wait. all got Genji! Oh, why? <laughs> why are we all done this? What are you doing? <laughs> I mean, it's just... It, it's just they switching. smoked them last time, though, didn't they? Yeah, I guess. <sighs> I can't switch. I believe it. <laughs> yeah, Someone else switch because I'm not gonna switch. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I don't want to switch either. I mean, I, dude, this it's is... not. It's not a hundred percent though. It's not a guarantee. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, it's a fifty. Which is which is why I thought this wouldn't happen because it was not <laughs> oh, But well, it's not like a... uh, congratulations, Paper X, on a win against the uh, finalists in Madrid. <laughs> Um, Gen G no. destroyed them last time they played against them. They anticipated what they would do. They played at the same pace as Paper X. They anticipated what they were doing. They shut it down. I'm- they matched them in terms of duels being won. It looked excellent. Yeah. Uh, Paper X have got no chance. We don't have to worry. We don't have to worry. <laughs> You're really. This is a guarantee. I was Believe. gonna, I was gonna side with Paper X like before today, kind of looking at it, and then I watched Gen G and on their Lotus. They stole the Heretics Molly, which Heretic stole from Coach mm. Potatoes. Shout out to that. <laughs> um, but, they, but, they, but they actually, the fact that they're upgrading in seven days mm-hmm. instead of like taking time off, that's a very good sign. Like they're still adding stuff in. So they're doing the like- Lotus Molly, sorry, explain. So, so, so you'll be your B with Viper and you throw a Molly over towards and it bounces off the leaf and it goes down towards A at the beginning. Mm. So you can fight three people a but it looks like there's four of you and you can have a faster rotate to, towards c nice so that's what heretics were using to shut it down and obviously when they were doing anti they were like damn we should just steal this um and so the fact that they're still like adding to stuff really kind of gives 
in my mind, like there's a 50 50 game. That's when I was like, okay, that, that they, they get the edge on this one in terms of winning it out because that's a good sign when, when they're still trying to, still trying to add stuff and improve stuff. I mean, I Paper, mean, X, Paper X is in the chat right now and says, I mean, guys, really, this texture guy is a massive problem. So, <laughs> okay, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, mean so I agree. Is, so is this Jing guy, apparently, because he can just come in and <laughs> top frag a match after not playing for a full two months. So I don't know. I mean, mm. I've also, you know, I, you know, I've also heard the streets talking that the Gen G players think Paper X is looking real strong with Jing's return. Mm. You know, yeah, uh, I mean, they're and not, you're still as not gonna switch. <laughs> uh, <laughs> still not gonna switch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Well, then that's that's it. We've just got to wait for the game to happen. Yeah. I guess we move on to the next prediction and await the classic Platchak curse again. <laughs> uh, the God, next man. game, it's one that we mentioned earlier, and it may spell the downfall of Team One, but it is DRX <laughs> playing against T1, a clash of the top Korean teams, or uh, minus Gen G. What? And Bren's actually gone. Wait, <laughs> what in the Lord's name am I doing going with T1 there's, here? There, what there, are there, you there's going to be going some with mistakes. Okay, for oh, no, for context. I submit these preds before they lost yes. to DFM. So, <laughs> for context, I, <laughs> okay. I send this form out for you guys to pick before the DFM game of happens. So, if you guys want to switch your picks, feel free. <laughs> yeah, I, I did it after. I'm still, I'm still kind of comfortable. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually still sticking with it, even though I did it before. But, Saichu, if you want to switch, because I. You're think it's still very... confident? Can you explain why no. you're confident? Because my default didn't... pick it. Because they didn't look bad against DFM. They didn't look bad. It's just DFM yeah. being good. Yeah. They, still I mean, didn't, they still didn't do that much wrong. Well, they, they did well, some stuff wrong, but it's yeah, not like, it wasn't it's not that enough bad. for me to worry. Mm. But I, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to swear you guys too much on this one, but also I didn't realize Josh point, pointing out that they only have to prep for T1 and T1 have to prep for two matches. That's I feel like that's, a big, that's a big deal. That is actually a big deal. But the I other mean, game that they've got coming up is RRQ. I feel like maybe the RRQ game is more of the trap game because it comes afterwards. I don't really know, to be honest. Yeah. Though. Can I you got... imagine if T1 preps so hard for DRX, loses a close 2-0 again, and then they lose to RRQ? <laughs> it could totally happen. Oh, it could man. totally happen. There's just no I, way. I mean, I feel like... DRX shouldn't be favored. And if you ask me this, you know, without having watched the matches, I would just say, yeah, well, DRX are playing kind of uh, a bit puggy. They're having to redo their roster last minute. It shouldn't really work. But True, I, um, I, I can sway you because I keep getting tagged in Twitter when Bren is like the only <laughs> person that votes against us. And he's always right, just bragging. And this feels like it could be enough time for that. Just look at my notifications just popping off and it's just, yeah, like, okay, yeah, everyone's flaming me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't uh, want to over... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it I keeps was happening. doing a lot. And I don't do it for when I'm wrong either, so people just keep thinking I'm a fucking prophet. God. Yeah. They just think, yeah, I, they just the think I'm getting all my friends right. There was one you got wrong this week that I got many wrong this week. About. It's basically oh, was... the tail end matches of this week I got wrong. Yeah, there, mm. there's one. There's I mean, one that's, I got wrong. Yeah, that's a classic. Well, we will definitely be giving our time to talk about that <laughs> later on. Um, yeah. I am going to swap though, Kurt, if you wouldn't mind. I'm going to swap over. I'm, I'm not trying to react too heavily to the loss against DFM, but I think I just saw enough that's bothered me about T1, their attack macro on Lotus, and the fact that Lotus is like the only map where they're looking at the top level where they're putting real pressure on good looking teams and even then weren't able to get it across the line I i'm not i'm not confident here but i'm gonna go with drx just to make it a split panel and yeah. let's move on to our final oh sorry go on have you no, got no, i i just wanted point? to add the other the other reason i still have faith even after the dfm game is i think dfm actually playing slower but calculated is what really threw t1 off they've really been happy to match a little bit higher tempo and drx is starting to play much higher tempo kind of you know, a little bit of that, like, scrim-type game there, so a puggy-type game. Uh, so I think that the style is actually going to favor T1 compared to the past matchups, but we'll see. Yeah. Okay. You took about right. the, um, you took about Sunset, where they, like, were really far back, and, and they, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. So that, that, was, that was really cool. I, man, it's just going back on D DFM. It was sick. It was just a <laughs> sick just DFM glazing no, It podcast. was good, though. It was good. <laughs> like, where they were just sitting back, they're playing the Heretics mm -hmm. comp, which they had obviously watched from Madrid, so they're, like, throwing flashes in, but they're just letting them take map control. It's cool. 
Right, let's move on. <laughs> yeah, let's move on. All right, the, the next game, right, we're going from, there. there is a banger of a game this week in Pacific with Genji playing against Paper X, but then there's also Global Esports playing against Talon, match of the week. <laughs> oh. No. oh. I don't know if this one's a, a guarantee. I mean, I feel like Talon have been playing better than Global, but if Global... Global are not going to solve a confidence issue, a choking issue, in one week. Yeah. They, they have a, they, the thing, the trouble with Global is they have, like, top team expectations for a roster that should never have had it because their fan base is so rabid. Mm. And I think that that... As you can tune it out as much as you want as a pro player... But unfortunately, if every waking moment that you end up on social media, you just end up stumbling upon a rabid fan just absolutely rinsing you and your org and your team after every single loss, that is going to affect you. And I think it what you said about them in a press conference saying that they had a bit of a choking problem in the matches probably contributes to it a little bit, I would have to imagine. Yeah. And so yeah, it's just unfortunate. I think what they should do is rebrand as like the first team from Bosnia. And then that, <laughs> there, are no, there are not many fans at all. And, um, and then it solves the choking problem kind of like indirectly because they'll, no one will be a fan of the team and therefore nobody will care. And then the players can play quite freely. It makes a big difference if, if you are expected to be winning a lot and you're not winning. But this team, I don't think really should be expected to win that much when it's been thrown and tacked together in the, in the way and form that it has. I think you're expecting this team to be kind of like punching maybe for middle of the pack. And even then, you, you, you are punching. Um, I don't know so, exactly know how the expectations got so out of whack. Because the for... fan base is rabbit. Well, yeah, but, well it's also it's also last year it was like the the hyper on sk rossi was still there and last year's roster was actually really pretty solid on paper they had good calling they actually showed a lot of hope in the beginning of the season right so now i think it's just everyone riding that hype despite the roster being entirely different yeah it's very strange i think it's also it's because weird. from what i've seen from the indian fans if you're losing all the time they would rather just see indian representation so, so in their heads, it's like, why the fuck are we paying for decent international players if y'all are just going to put up the same 0 and 5 Ls that we would do if you were going to put up an Indian roster? So I think that's where some of the logic and, and annoyance is coming from, too. That's also a good point because I think also some of these regions, they, they understand that their their subregion in Pacific is weaker, but then, like you said, they'd rather actually just get their own players out there to get experience at the Tier 1 level, right? And but that, you just get also... brutalized if you're playing Tier 1, man. Sure. Indian players that got put into this scenario, they would actually kill their careers because no one would ever trust in them again if they just got wiped. The, like, if you're losing 13-5 I... or whatever, not only are you going to lose confidence, the fans are going to give up on you. If, if, if a player that's in that position ever tries tries to go into another spot where they're actually supported a bit better, people are going to be like, nah, they were absolute dog shit before. What the fuck are you doing picking up these players? They were trash. What the fuck? Go on to the next wave of players coming up. Like, you you yeah. can't throw people into the deep end. Like, you, you, don't, you don't pick up an eight-year-old child and just throw them into the sea <laughs> to try to make them into the new Michael Phelps. You, you slowly build them through. You start in a paddling pool. You bring them into the shallow end. You put them in the deep end. You don't just yeet them off the fucking end of the pier and just expect them to be able to swim home. So I, I can see where the Indian fans are coming from, but I, I don't think it actually works that sure. way. Sure, I'm just saying. I'm just saying what I've seen from the fan base, and I and I see their reasoning. I'm not necessarily agreeing yeah. with it. So I, I'm I'm just saying that. Now, what I wanted to say though to any GE fans out there that if you want hope, I actually think that GE can get a really good map draft though against Talon, okay. right? Because because Talon. It, it seems like whenever they have to play the silver, they're going to still sub Lenny back in. So they're doing the whole musical chairs thing, which really messes them up because that means they're taking out Surf because maybe Cruz is still going to be the calling IGL. So then they have to switch Sentinels, et cetera, et cetera. And this becomes a whole issue because that's what happened when they played Ascent. And if they're banning Ascent, you still got Breeze open. If they're banning Breeze, you still got Ascent open. And we saw GE is happy to pick Ascent. So they're, they could actually have a pretty solid draft in forcing talent into these situations where you're going to have to play the Sova and go through the whole musical chairs, that could be some hope. So uh, are you going to switch or? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I, 
I do think talent. I do think talent are, are looking pretty good, honestly. Um, it, it, like I actually think I've been impressed with them. They kind of maybe my expectations were quite low, um, because of the roster from from last year. But um, yeah, they're they're actually impress- impressing me, and like their their game plans coming into a lot of the maps are, are actually like really decent. So yeah, definitely mm. feeling confident with this. Okay. Well, that does it for our Pacific Week 2 predictions as well. And it, it, we are having long segments talking about Pacific, but there are so many matches happening in Pacific because teams are playing tons and tons of games. So, uh, yeah, maybe we'll be a little quicker going through EMEA and uh, Americas, or maybe this will be our first five-hour podcast. We'll see. <laughs> but we're going to take a little break now, and we're going to uh, sub people around. We're going to be bringing in Mimi uh, and talking about EMEA. So EMEA heads, stick around. There's some... Uh, uh, I mean, the huge games, actually. The Fnatic ended up losing if you weren't following EMEA. So stick around to hear us talking about that. And we'll be back in a moment. Thank you, William, very much. I'm going to get some water. Yeah, I'll be back in a few yeah. minutes. GG's. GG's. Peace, bro. You guys already know what time it is. You guys already know. Let me let me pull up the playlist. Sorry, it's always so loud. I gotta get better on that. But Sneaky Snake, or Sneaky Snitch, and Kevin McLeod. Actually, you know what? We listened to this last time. I'm already bored of it. Let's just go to a random song in the playlist here. Oh, this one's so good. All right, be right back.
humming along with the songs? No. I was getting some snackies. I also have to put Mimi's predictions in, so I'll do that right now. Get the, the get the egg scramble playing as part of the uh, <laughs> soundtrack for this. Uh, could you link me it? I'm gonna do Mimi's <laughs> predictions. Yeah, but it's it's longer than thirty seconds, so we'll have to. It's it gonna take me a while to do time. Mimi's predictions. So. Uh. Wait, why did I just Google egg scramble? It's just come up with scrambled eggs. That's like the stupidest <laughs> thing I've ever done. It's not popular. All right, we got to get egg scramble. That song was not it. Even just the <laughs> beginning just threw me off. I'm kind of pissed off right now. I need to, I need to uh, pick me up. All right, here it is. I got it for you. Let me throw it. I Discord DM'd it to you. <laughs> Sliggy, I've seen the YouTube short, you little fuckhead. And this is me and Bren coming back at you. <laughs> You've thrown all my games, slandered my name. You're calling me out over TikTok, fam. I'm gonna club this slug and fuck up your mug. Your strats are malformed like the face of a pug. Your VCD legacy is all but a smear. Time for someone to sage out your career. I'm the prototype, stole my whole scene. I'm the original, you're the knockoff co street. You got eight chances, down what from the ten. I'm gonna write your real in back to ten. You come on, black chat, can't get a word in. This beat down will make you back to observe it. Chair streams, no cash, your survival's a gamble. Bald head, lush stash, here comes the egg scramble. All these bars was written by chat. Just like how bacon made every strat. My premier team, number one in the scene. Coach potato strat like calming cause, scream. You hating on little buddy? Well, I'm bringing in mine. Bren, time to go. Spit a fucking line. Your team's all got battered. Fish and chips, one, two, three. Your only good part is bacon, that's why they call you piggy. Your strats are made by bacon, yet you can't even fry. This is Barra, motherfucker. You get shot, you die. Ka. They got one chance to close this out. Slicky, I'll give you one chance to close your whore mouth. Brent, <laughs> you're being aggressive. Don't be a twat. I think it's over. We've owned him, chat. It really is one of the greatest things that... <laughs> That's incredible, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. I say that I've ever made. It wasn't... I didn't do any of it. It was literally all my chat and then LJ Breeze, <laughs> another person in my chat who audio... Uh, produced it. Welcome back to Plat Chat episode 173. Mimi is joining us, and I, I, I'm not going to host this. I'm bored of it, so maybe I'm do you really want to? <laughs> I'm really excited to host because I just got off a red eye flight coming home because I forgot to set an alarm and I woke up three minutes ago and I haven't watched <laughs> Yumi yet. So let's do this, chat. This is going to be an awesome game. Um, so we're, we're back. We're talking about EMEA now, and obviously that means Fnatic making their re, re debut. So I imagine they owned their opening match, right, guys? Yeah. yeah. Like, they, they came... I mean, Boaster <laughs> yeah. was on stream with Yinsu. He was talking all this shit. He was like, <laughs> we would have beaten every single team at mm -hmm. Masters Madrid. So, so, so guys, their, their, their first match went well, right? Yeah, it was really good, actually. Uh, well, we I... shouldn't tell her. We should just... <laughs> Wait, what? This, what this happens... <laughs> <laughs> this match happened so long ago, it feels like it's almost ancient history or, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, when I was watching the match, the, their icebox looked poo, don't get me wrong, for Fnatic. But on Lotus, I couldn't really, I, I didn't really walk away from Lotus thinking, oh, they're, uh, they're, they're, this is it, it's over, blow up the roster. Because honestly, the Fnatic fans and 100 Thieves fans can go hand in hand, handshaking um, over... Losing to the, one of the top teams in the region? Blow up the roster, guys. It's over. <laughs> well, give it up. Give, give it, let's give up this year. It's over. It's done. I can't believe this has happened. Like, you... Okay, 100 Thieves fans, you lost the Sentinels. They won the fucking event. Uh, and Fnatic, you lost the Heretics. This is a team of up-and-comers. Yeah, they haven't had much practice time. Yes, Miniboo got in after doing his exams and still rolled your fucking team. Okay, it's not the end of the world. That's not the end of the world. There's stuff that you can definitely build upon here. Um, if you are Fnatic, you're just in a different era of Valorant. This year, there's more competition than ever before at the top end of EMEA. They're, I think they're just too used to the expectation that Fnatic were just the default best team, I think, uh, no matter what. I think Boaster actually said it really well on the podcast. I mean, I, it's it, one of the things that he said on the podcast with Yinsu was, we didn't use the offseason very well compared to the other teams. And I think that's so, so obvious when you watch them play. Because yeah. every other team at Madrid, apart from 
paper rags. You was scrimming hardcore since October. They've been practicing, drilling, getting their compositional ideas after, well, I suppose after Sky developed, but a lot of them had kind of a, an idea even going into that patch change. Fnatic didn't really take the offseason that seriously. I think they assumed that there wouldn't be that much of an improvement heading from last year to this year. And so much of what they're doing is very similar to what they did before. This is a different composition to what they've run in the past. I don't think they've run the Harbor Viper before, or no, maybe they, they did towards the tail end. Right. Ever. But they still played it the same way they played the previous one, as in their, their, their setups to try to get Durka into aggressive positions were very similar. They're just using different pieces of utility. They're not fundamentally advancing their understanding of the Icebox meta game. And I think that this comp is behind the meta instead of ahead of it, which this Heretics comp is like really, really good. Yeah, I think the Heretics comp is very, very good. And, and like to back off what you're saying there in terms of like Harbor, Viper, right? There's two two vision blocks. And then on your your comp, you're playing with no flashes. So you yeah. can't go through any of the util. And then you're playing against another comp that has double flashes. And then on top of that, a lot of your play is, sure, we'll just retake with the Cove. And then you're playing against a comp that has like multiple mollies. So yeah. the Cove doesn't really work because you just you use the Cove and then you just can't defuse because of the util that's there. So... Yeah, yeah, it does does feel like uh, the the comp is little like it's like that. Oh, we can try something new, but it's like guys, you're, you're look trying at this to... double face. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. look at the double face afterwards over towards the other side with a flash. Oh, like, dude, it's... heretics are just setting up so many plays so and clean. so many win conditions in the round. And that I think. Do you remember watching the Sentinels uh, Madrid vlog? If you if you caught it, actually, one of the things that Kaplan was saying when he was calling them pussies and telling them they weren't going to win the final unless they picked their game up. <laughs> one, of the, one of the things that Kaplan said to Sentinels was, you're not out there making plays and like trying to take control of the game. You're just kind of, you know, being a bit slow, asking, should we do this? Should we do that? When you watch a team like Heretics, they're making a lot, they're going from like one thing straight into another thing. They're not waiting for the game to come to them. They play these dynamic posts. It's, it's really different to what Fnatic are doing. Sure. Fnatic are actually stuck in a little bit of the slower pace last year kind of meta okay yeah. so so i'm average fanatic fan i'm reactive i think we should fire elmo putty i think we should <laughs> send boaster to antarctica uh and fix the team someone walk me back from the ledge because i think you can look at this and you can be like they're playing comps that aren't really with the meta that some of the other top teams in their region are doing they're losing games that you wouldn't really expect them to i mean the second map a little bit closer is Fnatic just going to come back in the rest of these weeks, pop off, be a top-level team in EMEA, or am I right to send Boaster to Antarctica? <laughs> can, we, can we say their upcoming matches they, um, as well while, Giant we, while X, we talk this through? Yeah, they play Giant X next. Koi, Foot, Na'Vi. It's, it's Pretty easy strength easy to schedule. Until, yeah. until you get to Na'Vi, until you get to Foot maybe And as that's well. your last yeah. two matches, the hard teams. I think... But to, to answer you... Uh, go on, Brett, actually, you, you begin. I think that they went up against a really, really strong team of Heretics that despite, you know, Heretics saying they didn't have much practice and scrim time together, they're still one of the top teams in the EMEA easily um, without, a, without a shadow of a doubt in my mind. And I think that you trying to boil these problems down to the coach being different. Um, listen, maybe there's some semblance of an argument there, but it's way too fucking early to tell, by the way, and where, and also very difficult to actually kind of grasp the impact that a coach might actually have on the team. We know from Fnatic that, you know, Mini and Boaster work together in tandem to to put in a ton of prep work and whatnot, and it is a new system for Elmer Buddy to come into, but um, yeah, I, I think that it just takes time. It, the teams need time, especially when you haven't used the off-season to really grind out what you needed to do. Teams like Heretics, Kaiman Core, Sentinels, all use the off-season to great, to great success. I mean, really drilling uh, important factors that they felt like were, you know, going to be the, the 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 kind of things that you're building your team around. For Heretics, like the, the aggressive fighting over map control, re-clearing with, you know, setting Mini Boo up in those really four positions. For Sentinels, always being on the same page, having really clear ideas of their retake protocols. Uh, and Fnatic are just, they're just a little bit behind the times. They're still a good team. They still have potential. Still going to be a top team, but it's going to take a bit more time. Like you could, I could, you could kind of feel it with the calls they were making during this ice post game because they wanted to play proactively with this comp and it, you, you just don't have the tools. Like you, like you were mentioning, Sliggy, you don't have flashes. 
You can't play proactively unless you actually know the ins and outs of this comp exactly, because you have to expend mollies to try and fight for, um, like if, if you're trying to flood defense B, for example, there's one instance, I don't know if we're, we just watched it or what, but um, they tried to do it with a reckoning, a harbor roll. And you, you can't just only use the harbor roll and try and push past your cascade and everything else and everybody just trying to sync up. You need to use mollies, you need to use extra elements of your util because you don't have the flashes to fight effectively over it compared to other teams. And so those portions are missing. You can tell the Fnatic want to make the right adjustments in terms of their overall play, but they don't understand what they need to do with the comp that they've got, which for me, it screams prep time. It screams prep time, it screams that they haven't really got the reps with, with that particular comp on this map here. Um, so it should get fixed with time in theory, but you just need to also give the team a bit more time because they, they haven't used the off season. So it's full of, I, I, just haven't. I'd, I'd also like to intercede on Boaster's behalf before you buy the tickets to send him to Antarctica. Okay. Because the <laughs> I mean, macro I was calling... on the booking page, so. <laughs> right, well, well, hold off for a moment because also those prices might get cheaper later on. You never know. Correct. So maybe don't book them just yet. <laughs> but the, the, um, the macro calling, I thought, was actually really good from Boaster during this series. I think he was finding very good timings in the mid-round to put pressure on his opponents. His attack side calling was quite nice from the macro. His defense side, like, they were, they were when... When Heretics called freezes in the round, he was finding good moments to like re-clear out A on Icebox or push down Tube or something. The problem is those macro successes didn't really matter because they had misplayed like an understanding of how the ults were going to work or an understanding of how the micro was going to work or they hadn't anticipated how aggressive Heretics could get with their flash comp or something. So like the, the still like close your eyes, visualize the mini map kind of stuff, Boaster was nailing. But I think there is an element to the fact that I think when you listen to how Boaster thinks about the game, he thinks about it in quite a um, a cerebral sense and a very... For example, do you remember last year where he was talking about not wanting to use alts on eco rounds? And he was very much against that idea. And he mentioned it actually again in the podcast with Yinsu. He said, that, you know, there was a lot of sloppy play at Madrid, people in a 3v5, like throwing multiple alts into the round. Like, are you really going to win that, bro? And I think his point of view is actually becoming a little outdated, actually, with Valorant. I think... Valorant is becoming a game of the more ideas, the better. The more opportunities to make a play to win the round, the better. The more ways that you can put pressure on your opponent to swing the round into your favor, the better. And so in some sense, you know, if you pile all of these ideas on top of each other, you'll eventually get an into advantage scenario and then be able to, to recover it. So the, I think there's a little bit that he needs to adjust. And the other point too with Elmer Putty, dude, people are overreacting way too much to that in my opinion. Mini is still with the team. Do you think they've just given the... First of all, what do you think Elmer Putty's done? Like, come in and gone, Mini, Mini, Mini. Shh. <laughs> Never talk. <laughs> Never... I don't want to hear a fucking word from your mouth, mate. And then, Bo Boaster, you're a dumb cunt. Shut up. Let me play... Let me... I'm going to pick all of your comps. You can play exactly how I say. And when you lose, you're going to say that I'm a good coach. Okay? Are we understood? Thank you. Like, what? That's obviously not happening. They've still got the system of Boaster and me there. But I actually think possibly one of the things is that Elmer Putty might have not had enough say with this team because he came in afterwards. So if this team is resting on its laurels a little bit, is not putting in the same amount of, like, hunger for the game that the other teams are it's very difficult as a new coach to a team that's already won twice to be like guys like you're not playing like i'm expecting a team that wants to win more trophies to play right now that is really fucking tough because you don't come from a position of having that like you can't talk to the players like that they're, they're the fucking winners you came from you know uh, from uh, teams that haven't done anything so i, I think that's yeah maybe yeah. where some of the problem is coming and you don't fix that by firing elmer putty yeah, absolutely. So, like, can you speak to that at all as, as, yeah, as someone I was, who has kind of come say, into the middle of teams before? We shouldn't uh, We shouldn't be letting Mini have a free ride. Like, if we're going to flame the team, if anything, we should be going more for him. Uh, but <laughs> I, w I will just say that in terms of, like, individual form, I think we need to talk about as well. There's multiple times where I'm watching these players, Chronicle, um, Alpha. Like, I remember a round on uh, Icebox, Alpha goes for a wall. And he's shooting people in the back and, and it's alpha, you, you're thinking two, three Ks. And it's like a little bit of a fumble and it's one. And it's like, this this never used to happen. I'm seeing a couple of rounds as well, like Leo, Chronicle, similar situations where I'm like, oh, they would normally get two here and they're not. So I do feel like the actual form in terms of them playing and, and maybe the confidence issues or whatever, it's just like a slump or, or, or something like that. But it does feel like that. They did say they had the 
pissing, shitting, and vomiting disease. I that, believe. Yeah, I mean that could actually that could actually be a thing for sure. <laughs> um, so yeah, that kind of makes more sense. But I will also talk about like Lotus a little bit, and I, I I was very vocal about the fact that they got a free ride on Lotus for a year. Every everyone gave them an absolute freebie. I feel like this comp has weaknesses in my eyes. People on the fence should be getting six, seven rounds against this comp, and the fact that this comp has now become like a hard meta it means that a lot of teams are practicing against that in practice and they're seeing other teams do stuff against it like going aggro a getting the odin over towards tree so now teams are starting to like actually fundamentally understand what the weaknesses are of this comp whereas before i felt like it just like it just ran over teams and teams were so busy focusing on their own crap because so much stuff was going wrong there that they never got to venture out and actually like look at how we can tackle this but now it's become the meta teams are just getting a lot better at playing against this comp so i do think that's like a little bit of a factor in terms of lotus that they can't they can't rely on all of this stuff anymore it's not going to be as easy as you guys were saying earlier sure so yeah all right, well, let's move on to some of our other EMEA matches. Karma, uh, Fnatic, we'll, we'll hold off on the ticket to send Boaster to Antarctica for now. Thank God. If they lose another match, though, who knows? Who knows? If they lose to Giants, ship He's them gone. off. Yeah, because speaking of Giants, pretty bad performance to start things off here against Carmen Core. Carmen Core, after a kind of a disappointing end going out in groups at Masters Madrid, came out and absolutely dumpstered on these guys. Uh, what what are we making of the K-Core re-debut? Are they going to be a force to stay? Dude, I, I felt this one hard to... I, I mean, this was hard to watch. It was hard to watch and it was hard to get a grasp in terms of just like K-Corp because this Breeze game was an absolute shit show. Like, I'm I'm really good <laughs> at not flaming on my stream and I just had to be silent. Uh, headphone I'm users, I see a on. Carmen Core jersey being put on. Please <laughs> turn down your volume. <laughs> uh. <laughs> You're, he's a changed man. Uh, uh. What changes dude, in a year? I'm such a ch dude. My tits are so large. I can't get out. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay, okay. Maybe I need to lose a little bit of weight, but I am also putting it on over the top of a uh, of a sweater. Dude, they allied the blur. <laughs> they did allied the blur. I don't have anything to say. To say? Sorry, no, I'm just okay. putting it on. You don't have a point. <laughs> no, I don't have a point. It was just a very clean game. They played excellently. I was very impressed. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I. I, this match was so long ago again, it's like one of those things that was at the beginning of the week and we've watched so much Valorant every single day that I've lost track of this match. But I just remember walking away thinking they looked, Carmen Cole looked really, really fucking good. I mean, yeah. Giants, Giants came into this making last minute changes, right? With Nuki gone? Yeah. Yeah. Nuki, Nuki out, gone, so... Purple in, uh, they changed the roles as well. Yeah. Um, the, Redgar looked I, I would say to be generous to Redgar, he looked completely overwhelmed in terms of getting his team to do the right things as a team that he just didn't have any mental bandwidth left to play the, the game. Opens like, he up actually, VLR, checks first he, kill, first death. Yeah. It's negative eight. It's, yeah, it's and he got eight great. kills in the whole series as well. But oh. the way that he was dying was not like within duels. He would straight up like, the, there's moments on Sunset where he's stood, you know, when you attack A, and as the omen, you end up behind the box, kind of looking towards A link in the post plan. Sure. And the trip gets broken behind him, and he just yeah, he doesn't react him. at all. He's yeah. just, I think there's so much of his brain is being used to try to figure out how his team is functioning, because none of it's set yet, that he just had nothing left to play the game. I um dude I and like I had this issue with Liquid as well when I, when I used to watch him he was like why is he lurking and why is Nats not lurking and now it's like all of a sudden he's just decided that he's a lurker and I just don't think it suits him especially when you're on IGL you want to be with the pack you want to see what's going on so you can make these calls and like you would rely on just a person to be like oh you guys can come be like that's pretty much it like I've walked into B I've made a play you guys can come over here but like when you're not with the pack and you're in IGL it just I swear it all falls apart you're looking at the mini map and then you're focusing on people like timing taking timings around the map I just yeah I just hate it I don't know where this whole it's like he thinks he was Nats in Gambit, and he's just like, oh, I'm, I'm the guy that lurks. I don't know where this has come from. And there were, there were like question marks in terms of the IGLing in Liquid anyway, especially when I talk about Lotus, uh, sorry, Haven and Champs, where they had flashes and they couldn't go through these walls. And, I, and I'm still not seeing convincing signs. Like, I, I think it's uh, it's not looking good. Like, it really isn't looking good. Um, How think, much uh, of, um, of just from this game do we feel this was like, a first game after roster changes, they underperformed against one of one, admittedly one of the best teams in their league. 
or is this kind of more of a, a, a deeper worrying sign for the future of the squad being able to be competitive against those those higher level squads in EMEA? You know those tickets you were going to buy for Boaster to Antarctica? Yeah. <laughs> get Cloud to Antarctica just to help him escape from this team. Just not, he'll not he'll be safer in Antarctica. Him, just to let no, him out. No, just to let him free. Just, just <laughs> release him from the prison. I don't think this team is I think this team has taken something that used to work in the past and they've tried to make so many changes to it that it's actually lost the stuff that used to make it good and I don't think it has What's anything that guy's left. Boat? That, the guy who Theseus? Had the boat. Yeah, he took the it all the Theseus? And then it was different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Famously, while sailing, he thought, I'm going to disassemble this yeah. boat. And he just took the boat to pieces, the ship of swam Theseus, for a bit. The ship of Theseus may still be the same ship, but the ship of Theseus X, very different ship. <laughs> yeah. They've changed so much of the ship, but they've, yeah, they've kind of taken all of the beautiful architecture and replaced it with... Um, Stuff that's more structurally stable, but they're left with a less beautiful ship overall. Dude, Nuke just took everything. He took the sails, he took all the oars, he's got nothing left. Nuke just stored them all. It's just a boat just sitting there, just floating around. Yeah. For, yeah, for anyone who doesn't get the reference, there's the Wikipedia article. <laughs> just read that in its entirety real quick, uh, uh, and it's gone. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I will I say, I will it say it's uh, it's... it's you have to hit rock bottom sometimes. I'm hoping this is it. <laughs> no. Ships right. famously are not supposed to hit yeah, rock bottom. Yeah, no, we're we're not, we're still talking that. about ships. Yeah, yeah. And Nuki actually just pulled out the pull log from the side of the ship as he left, and it's, it's all downhill. So they, they play against Fnatic next, and then oh, Liquid wait, wait. after that. And the game against Liquid is the one that is a must-win for Giants to get things off the board. Redgar versus Liquid... If Giants are not ready in a week and two days to to win that, it's just kind of Jova for, I mean, until what? When Stage does, two? Yeah, what is, when is that? Like June or something? Yeah, post Shanghai. Mm. That yeah. would be brutal. All right, well, let's move on to the, the last specific match we're going to talk about for EMEA. Uh, Navi, coming back in after not making Masters Madrid, came out uh, and got themselves a pretty good win here against Vitality. <laughs> we are no longer <laughs> allaying the blue. Dude, Navi <laughs> were fucking good. I, is, not, is Angel back, chat? They, they, this team, and it's not just Angel. It's not just Angel because people are going to look at this win and they're going to see Angel top fragging in I'm certain scenarios. Right I'm doing it right now. I'm doing it right now. Don't, don't. It's not just Angel. But I'm he's telling plus you now, fourteen. Yeah, he's he my was goat. popping off. But he's my goat. The, the, I tell you what, the the things that weren't missing again is like Navi haven't missed a missed a step in terms of their macro play. They have really good ideas when they come into a round. We're going to pressure this area of the map. We're going to the overall game plan is like we're going to pull this. They have they have great ideas. They're thinking about trap plays that could potentially be used against them. They're thinking about all the right elements during a round that could fuck them up and they're thinking about how they want to win the round and end the round. Very rarely did a round go to the point where they were left without a clue. And I thought you saw all the best elements of this team. I thought you saw that the trades and the fundies from Shao and Sagetsu when they're left in those clutch scenarios on point again, like actual Lotus is their domain on that map in, in particular. And finally, the comps actually looked like they had a semblance of an idea to them, which is the number one thing that Na'Vi were missing for the longest time. My hot take was that Na'Vi, I think, looked like the best Valorant that we've seen um, in stage one when they en ended up playing. It was very early on. At this point, I don't know if I would agree with that because Sen looked pretty good with no sleep at all. And um, and there's been a lot of Valorant since then. But I, I was dead impressed with Na'Vi. I thought this team looked excellent. I thought they had fixed all the problems I wanted them to fix. And they hadn't missed a step with all the stuff that was going right for them last year. Dude, rough round to show when you're talking about the excellence of Na'Vi. <laughs> yeah. and the fucking, it was I, a I rare thought, fumble, actually. I looked at VLR. Them. I thought they won that round. It must have... Uh... That's, that's, oh, I was looking at the I'm wrong there, that's that's game. I was looking oh, at the but yeah, it does um, it does help when Navi are having like Angel on his Taravangian arc. He's just woken up and he's like, <laughs> "I have 500 IQ today, and I'm simply going to shoot everybody in the head." I, you get. It wasn't I was that many to, instances of it. There were so many oh, on blind. He fucked up. He became a deity. <laughs> he, he was like an ascended <laughs> angel who became a god and just started playing with the puppets on the floor. Uh, he, 
He fucking smoked them. He was winning. He won an ace in a 1v... He, he had a 1v5 ace, on side. Dude, I think he you... 1v2'd people coming up B-long by just holding it uh, towards the teleporter. He had them shook. He had Is them the absolutely well? shook. Yeah, dude, he was just doing yeah. this. <laughs> he was just yeah. doing this all the day. He didn't lose aim jewels. It was actually wild. I, I think but, there was a big aim diff as well in, in terms of this game. But, but I um, also think that if if... Navi even weren't winning this, I think it would have been a very even game on bind, and Navi still would have had chances to win. The problem that I'm seeing with Vitality is they had so many good ideas on their attack side, and they're running a weird composition, right? The deadlock. They had so many cool setups with it. Really lovely. But their confidence was off by the time they got to the attack side. They were getting aim diffed. And on the defense side, those defensive setups were not it. They had some nice ideas with like they were they were putting a lot of they had some cool like hookah crunches where they throw a nade through with short control combo mm -hmm. it with a grav net and like anybody in in hookah would die but they couldn't stop a b hit like if you if you just dodge that and then they go into a b hit or if they all ran up long there's always two players over towards b in every defensive setup they ran i think and they just folded so that's yeah. not an effective bind yeah. defense at all yeah and when i watch vitality it reminds me of like the old guild where like they used to smash us in practice and then it'll get to an official and it would just be like they they just kind of lose a couple of rounds and then some some of the players go a little bit quiet so i mean they're a very momentum based team um and i would like to i mean they have like two performance coaches right i'm not trying to I'm not trying to call them out but i think that's like they need to <laughs> they need to try and Wait, do their work uh, because I, I know they're banging their VLR in page? Uh, practice yeah, KC said that they were farming in practice. Just look at the number of people here. Yeah. Is that is that 12 in total? <laughs> I mean, it's... My it's, God. The staff yeah. is... You could scrim against the staff <laughs> at that point. It's like you could have they a total scrim against the staff. All right, yeah. well, I need a Placido and Marcus underscore a skill... Sen. I'm sorry. Please fix them. <laughs> 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 please tell them they're yeah. good at the video game and remind them that they are I, I felt like there were so many times where I'm watching safe play optimally but like just choosing to take the safer option I, I hate that that's like a pun at that point <laughs> rather than trying to make the play and rely on his aim and I think that's one of the things that made him such an incredible duelist was he found moments to put pressure on on his opponents and this swap he is a very good flex player but one of the things that they might run into unless they make that adjustment is for example they had on their defense side runner playing with uh safe uh, uh, showers and runner would take the duel and i don't think safe swung with him once i think the idea was to do that but safe always backed off not wanting to take the risk of swinging into many navi players and dying and then the round is just over mm. and i think it's fine to play um, you know, optimal, safe, risk-averse, positive EV Valorant. But unless you're throwing in the risks sometimes, you, your opponent's never afraid to make plays like that because they just know that you're always going to back. And I think that was one of the things that really got exposed here was that Na'Vi just knew Vitality were going to not take uh, risky peaks. Yep. Yeah. All right, I think this then brings us kind of nicely into our next question to talk about, which is whether EMEA is a top-heavy region. Because you, you look at this this region, and you see heretics, eh, it's looking good. You see Carmen Core, it's looking good. You, you see a Fnatic who fell short here, but in the past has been one of the best teams, and you probably see a Na'Vi up there. And then we're also coming out, and we're seeing every single one of these opening matches being a being pretty much a 2-0, a, a not being super close throughout this initial week here. So that that does bring us to the question at hand, guys. Do do we think that EMEA has these like bottom tier teams that aren't really able to compete, or is it going to even out throughout the season? I'm hoping it evens out, but I think at the moment it is a little bit top heavy. I think there's quite a few underperformers. I'm not sure I'm ready to put like vitality in the underperformer just because navi looks so good i still haven't got like a good gauge of where vitality are as a, as a world where vitality is still like right at the top in terms of this um but there does seem to be like a bigger break than i thought um especially with like liquid underperforming um and giants underperforming who i maybe would have put more in the middle of the pack so yeah i think there's definitely more of a defined gap than i originally thought at least at least so far it can change within like a, a week or so
if you look at the table, there is no way that Fnatic and Vitality are staying at the bottom of Alpha. No. It's just not, yeah. that is absolutely not happening. So while that feels like, yeah, they're underperforming at the moment, they're going to get a lot better when they play against other opponents that they can beat. And you also haven't seen some of the clashes that are going to be amazing in the middle of the pack. When Gentle Mates plays against teams like Vitality, or even plays against teams like uh, Fnatic, or possibly even the KC, the gentleman's style is so bizarre, unusual, that I think they're going to be like a, a... Maybe they'll get 2 0 still, but it's going to be a really difficult game, a fun game to watch with unusual ideas that force their opponents to adapt. Yeah. Like, those kind of fun matches just haven't really happened yet. So, you, you will see them, though. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I think that you're going to see, as, as it goes on, that parity just... Um, continue in the middle of the pack. It, it just looks top heavy now because we're overreaction all wells. Just yeah. we're That's just me, we're me. only looking at the numbers. Yeah, we're just. But it's it's there, there definitely is a lot of parity there. I think EMEA has. In, I don't know in what way is it top heavy because I, I you could name four teams that I think should be competing for like the top spot, and that's four teams out of eleven. Like if it's top heavy. Yeah, I guess that, there's just a implies, massive gap between the top and the bottom. Is yeah, that the, implies the a big gap. Yeah, the but question I is think like the mid tier table. Gap. I mean, the mid table is also hyper competitive, like you were saying, like Vitality, Gentlemates, like those type of teams as well. But then Foot. who else is in there? Oh, Foot, Foot as well. Yeah, dude, okay. like you've got you've got teams. But the that other are teams be have kind punching. of fallen off. I feel oh, like the sure. other teams that we thought were in that discussion are, are not looking very good. And that's what when you look at the group again, Alpha, it looks predetermined already. Like, I'd be amazed if Liquid or BBL make it to playoff. Yeah, I mean, much... Or even much, in the conversation. Yeah, much like a, the trend of the, the 2010s into the 2020s, we've seen a massive decline of the middle class in the EMEA. <laughs> <laughs> the rich get richer, the poor get poor in EMEA. Uh, there's some of the rich getting poorer, though. Fnatic getting true. poorer has really opened it. up the Tax top. Tax Fnatic even more. <laughs> bring them down, down to reality. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> All right, I, I think that's all we have to say there. Let's move on to the to the money, the predictions. Oh, fuck. <laughs> What's that reaction, Brian? Uh, just, Is this the man just, who predicted again? No, no. TFM the, the, my preds have been my preds have been pretty good, but I the, I have there's an expectation now to perform, and I just and now I'm nervous. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I'm like the I'm like global esports as a team. The fans are clamoring for <laughs> for good results. They're using their fucking. I've got I've got betting sponsors adding me, trying to like be like, <laughs> oh, your preds are so good, Brad. And like, <laughs> shut the fuck up, blue tick. Like, get away from me. <laughs> just get away from my social media post. I'm trying to get free advertisement. So <laughs> there's a lot of pressure on these preds right now. To, to perform and um i don't yeah I, don't, is I just Brent feel... a true god or a false idol let's yeah let's <laughs> find that <laughs> copenhagen mentioned uh okay so the first match of this weekend for emea carmine core where's his foot what have we got oh <laughs> you were so ready with that kurt yeah Dude. it was fast my core was all oh. slipping <sighs> I feel like this isn't a super unreasonable guarantee. Carmen Gore had a really Ooh. good debut. I mean, Foot should play them close, but uh, they, they're a solid squad. But you'd really think that, that K-Core is, is punching above right now, no? What's the, what's the sadness? Yeah. What's the I, groans? I think so. I think there's upset potential, though, with Foot. Like, sure. Foot aren't of our team. The, 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 the problem is they just smoked year. Liquid. They just absolutely put them in a pipe and smoked them. Yeah. So it, it's kind of difficult to feel like Foot have no chance in the game because you've just seen them hitting too. They put cracks back on KO. They had CNED playing Jet on Icebox. Yep. It, looked, it looked pretty decent and they were owning. And so much of that though was coming down to them uh, like forcing mistakes out of Liquid and then just winning every aim duel. They actually just won like every aim duel in this map. Uh, in this match, rather. Especially on split. Uh, uh, but I can't really see that happening against KC. I think the KC skill is too high for that, but... You never know. It's it's still hard to gauge where they are, I think. We, we need more. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it makes it harder. You know, I'm, I'm kind of... Like, I have them in the same bit of Zeta where I'm just like, i am still got kickoff in my mind where they just really underperformed. And it's hard for me to reevaluate them after like the five weeks i'm still holding that against them but they did look good against liquid but i do think that and then i'm still like was that more liquid making mistakes or was that them looking good so i think there is upset potential but this is this is what i have to go for mm. 
Yeah. Sure. That seems that seems very reasonable. I, I I think for me, like my 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 I almost said my foot love. Um, <laughs> my my love of the team formerly known as football is. <laughs> <laughs> is, is, is that they're in like solid dark horse territory? A squad that can they can always get an upset win has been steadily improving throughout this year. But K Core, I, I don't see it there yet. I do What's have another your foot point love, though, Josh. No, not my foot love. <laughs> I do have another point on K Core though, because K Core are the team that are playing twice next week, and I want to keep following this narrative of like mm. who's playing twice and what is the trap game, because they play against foot and gentle mates. And I think general mates play such bizarre Valorant and actually foot don't play standard compositions either on a lot of their maps that you have to do a shit ton of prep for both of these games. And I think that is going to be a little difficult for, K for KC, especially if they want to apply the same level of anti that they often bring to important games. Plus the KC general mates one is like a, a French rivalry match. I think there's actually some potential for KC to slip up in one of these matches. I, it's a lot on their plate here this uh, coming week. All right. Yeah. Uh, well, let's move on to our next match. Team Vitality versus Team Heretics. Heretics coming off a big win to start that one. Where are we headed with the Preds? <laughs> Another <laughs> guarantee. Four <laughs> Heretics prediction. Dudes, no one, no, with all of the stuff stacking against heretics, no one's going vitality. Okay, but like, what, what is, what is stacked against heretics? Yeah, what is it? Yeah, this exactly. Can Miniboo play? Is Rian's playing? Like, what's 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 going on with heretics? I don't have the juice. I don't know what's Any going on juicers? with this roster. I, I thought they said they sorted it, but I think they said that they got lucky with exams that Miniboo can come out. But I don't know if they're talking about just the first. Yeah, just just the first or... week. That's what I mean. Like, I they, this team, I feel like could chop and change. Uh, on a given notice in terms of their comp or in terms of the, the roster well, they play. We... And it makes a big difference if they end up swapping around these players because they've had to try, they've had to change around the roles to get Paddy in and, and, and make it work, right, with their scenario that they've been put into time and time, time and again with the subs. Um, I don't know where they stand right now. I mean, if we're just looking like same expectations of Heretics, you know, we're assuming it's the same as week one, where they're playing with the roster that they've been playing with since kickoff. Yeah, I would I would put them favored um, against Vitality, um, but it's one of those things that's just up in the air. I just find it. Yeah, I feel like a, a punt on Vitality wouldn't go amiss. Now the the, the one guy in the chat. Okay, one is, guy. Uh, I don't say one that, guy. Not this again. This is no, one not guy. the one guy. All right. But the thing is, I'm sure the info does exist somewhere. I just haven't seen it. Like heretics have been very open with all of their schedule stuff. Yeah. So I don't think it's actually like a hidden as to whether or not Miniboo is playing. But I, I believe that they are running the same roster for this upcoming week, and that Miniboo had some time later on that he had to take off again. Um. I think they said that in their opening when, you know, when Neil Zeno sat down yeah. with, um, with them to, to, to kind of talk about it. So, I, yeah, I'm feeling good about Heretics, though. I, I think Vitality brought so many cool ideas, but that's just like every day for Heretics. And the confidence diff and Miniboo playing, and Miniboo's going to storm these guys if they don't step up and actually fight him. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like I said, it's hard to gauge where Vitality's at from the Navi game as well, so... Um, I could see an upset, but um, yeah, we'll see. Dude, you you talking about one person in chat? Just reminded when I started streaming, I was so naive, man. <laughs> like literally, I used to read chat and just think that everything was 100 percent true. What's so, the oh, dumbest really? one that's, man that's you fell for? Ah, uh, dude, I don't even want to think. It's on record somewhere. Let's not talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> like the amount of times, and then people be like, "No, this guy's lying." I'm like, "Oh yeah, I kind of forgot that that's a thing." Just people lying on the internet, just trolling <laughs> me. Yeah, it's, was it's it, a learning curve. Was it you that got hit by the deal, though? Was that... Oh, that was a good one, though. Dude, dude someone, <laughs> someone hit me with the dildo. That, that sounds great. My chat tried to get me with that for so long. I never fell for it. And then someone in chat, after like a 16-hour stream, I was like on America's. I was like really tired. And someone was just like, would you rather... Would you rather shop at Starbucks or Dildo? And I was like, wait, what's Dildo? And then that was it, man. <laughs> and then they showed Mini it when they were streaming, and it's a clip of Mini, and this is, yeah, it's outrageous, man. My chat, my chat, that was back in the days where Chad just used to try and wreck me, and I was just so naive, falling for everything. <laughs> I would just read out everything that Chad just puts. It's crazy. I do the same. I, I love being naive because I just believe everything on the internet. I'm very susceptible. I have no money now. 
Um, I've spent it all <laughs> you, on various... You're the guy who falls for the insane Discord scam that could get you all. And it's just, hi, can I have a $1,000, please? Yeah. It's yeah, like, I've yeah, got no sure. money. I've invested okay. it all into supplements. And um, I trust everything I see online. <laughs> well, legally, no one can lie on the internet. So I it's really true. hope no one ever lies again. Um, <laughs> let's move on, though. Navi, Team Liquid. Survey says... What do you think? This is stacked. <laughs> We've yeah. got to get so many of these wrong, surely. Not this Dude, one. But... I mean, <laughs> this one's not getting wrong, though. This yeah. one's not wrong. Would it, Even if Angel, if, if Angel has his dog day to counter the god day, it's, they're still winning this game. Yeah. It's, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in Na'Vi right now. I don't yeah. want my trust to be misplaced, but he, I'm seriously, even if Angel wasn't popping off, I don't think he had that many. I mean, yes, he was popping off. I don't think it was <laughs> contingent for them Dude, winning, though. I'm going to go and find all the highlights of Angel going nuclear Dude, in that compile game it. and show compile you. Compile it and then tell me what tell me what the outcome is when he goes one and done in that in that spot. And well, tell yeah, me if it makes the, a difference. But that's the, the point. Oh right, I see. No, it absolutely would, man. It absolutely would. It wouldn't. I I guarantee you, it wouldn't. They, they, they place way too tight together that when Angel eventually does feed and it falls off, he's gonna have like three players at his back just ready to trade him out. This, it's uh, also think they're not gonna get that worse. But but to me, when Angel has his incredible games, they can't lose. And then when Angel has his bad games, other people pick up the slack a lot of the time anyway. Mm. I, I yeah. feel like this is a perfect YouTube show, and just has like Brent being like, "Oh, it wasn't even that impactful," and then it's just like five k, <laughs> just two k, <laughs> just entries after entries. There's a lot of potential. <laughs> just I'm excited with the full screen angel meme. Yeah, uh, just his face. Just angel walking really wide and aggressively. <laughs> Dunking on him. I can't wait for Clove to be enabled, and Navi's gonna win every match. And and uh, Angel will have like thirty kills and like forty five. They're deaths. not gonna play Clove. <laughs> they're not gonna play Clove. They they're just not. They they they're too util pilled to ever go down that route. It's like a paper X agent. It's not a. It's not a. Yeah, it's not I a know, Angel but it's, I want it. Can yeah, I? Can it, I ask it, it you makes guys? Sense. Oh Please. yeah, I th it does. But also, Shao has been playing the smokes for this team for a while yeah. now yes. as well, yeah. um, which I assume is partly due to the IGL and stuff too. But can I ask you guys? I was having this conversation with my chat while I was doing a, a vod review of the Vitality um, uh, Navi game, and I was saying, what do you reckon the ratio is between when Ra when Angel has unbelievable games, when he plays normally, and when he feeds? Because I think. Angel, he's got the full spectrum, right? We've all seen it. Like the, the Tarek reacts to Angel just hard trolling and feeding. <laughs> and then you've got a lot of his normal games. And then you've got games like this where he just takes over and dominates the game. Uh, what, what do you reckon if you had to put percentages on it, it, it looks like? Uh, I think it works. At, oh, actually, does it work more? Do you know what? I think it probably pretty even. But if you just separated out when CNED was on the team and it felt like the whole team wanted the team to fail and they wanted <laughs> artists back, then I think it's pretty stuck to just like failing. So yeah, mm. I think it was like relatively good in terms of success rate. CNED joined and Angel was really just going for some like the the peak of it that we've ever seen, and then now it's back to like pretty good levels. That's where mm. I'm at with it. I have no opinion on this. I just think Angel feeds, Angel doesn't feed, doesn't matter, Navi will still be winning. <laughs> the, what, what was the question? I forgot the question. Just the God How tier versus dog tier work? versus mortal tier. Yeah. Because I, but... I reckon it's something like 10, 50, 40%. Like 10% God tier takes over a game one in every yeah, 10 maps. Yeah, that's reasonable. 50% of the time he's just normal he's just playing a normal game and you don't really notice him everybody else is playing well and that's navi mm -hmm. and 40 percent of the time like straight up almost half the time angel is like what are you doing mate and then <laughs> they either win the round or you know lose the rounds often not particularly as well i think it's but 15 percent god mode i think it happens a little more often than you think i think it's yeah. like if you're playing like three bios i think like every three series you get a map which is like six to nine maps or whatever I think every three yeah. series you get an angel mode. He's always god mode. Yeah. He's always he's god always mode. God you mode. are the biggest angel glazer. It's crazy, I'm just, I'm just saying that even when he's feeding, he and I'm, I'm a big, big fan of his feeding gameplay because it's not... <laughs> 
it, I'm, I've said this point before, but it always has purpose behind it. Maybe I'm giving him too much fucking credit here, but when, when he was doing it before, it's because his team were too scared. And he was like, guys, don't worry. I'll take matters into my own hand. Yeah, it's not optimal if I die on Omen first with our <laughs> composition, but he's going to take the fight. And whether you like it or not, he's going to open up that area, the fucking map for Zipan or whoever else to trade the fuck out of him. And it, it's almost necessary sometimes. I think I'd rather have that than the passive, like, oh, everybody's scared to, to, to open up the fight. And, and uh, he understands what his team needs to win in a round. And I respect that because it goes against common sense. I respect that so much. Uh, they're, so, they're, 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 yeah, I, it's, it's all the time. He has God, you, got, you just don't see, you just don't see the brilliance that mm -hmm. I do. You basically want it's him on bleed. Time. You want him yeah, on bleed. Yeah, get, get this guy on bleed. <laughs> to I'm help telling you, out. that team would be would be would be singing the praises of bleed all day long if he was on that roster. I'm telling you, he'd be not only with the macro being being called well, dude. He would be opening up so much of the map for Yaster. It would be unreal. <laughs> yeah, he, he would. He could fix her. <laughs> I think he could. Angel works in mysterious ways. Perhaps <laughs> we will see it. <laughs> Perhaps the second coming of Angel will arrive soon. But before then, we have one more match to predict. Fnatic versus Giant. Bruh. Bruh. <laughs> it's four guarantees. All yeah. Fnatic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah, I, I just want... Bad matches to pick on. <laughs> yeah, these are <laughs> very one-sided. I, I just is... really hope uh, Giants just... I, I just want to see Red Guard just look look like kind of back to where he was with gambit i don't know this whole new thing is because i know i know he can look way better than this uh, i think that's why i'm being so harsh because i just and like i don't think they're going to win this i just want to see giants look better and and kind of fanatic as well individually but i i just want to see a bit of belief i want to see the improvement but this is going to be one-sided surely that in my opinion there are three good games upcoming this week in emea Two of them are the Carmen Corp games, because I do think that because they're playing two matches, that, you know, the game against Foot or the game against Gentle Mates, those are both going to be really interesting. But the, the other one is BBL playing against Koi, which is like the close game where maybe you wouldn't know who to predict. And mate, I mean, that's not getting a match of the week anytime soon, is it? No. So, so it, it does feel still like a, it's a bit uneven, a lot maybe, of the matches. Maybe the EMEA is top heavy. Maybe we need to go back to that topic. Yeah. Maybe I won't sing I mean, the praises of the of the region overall. Yeah. Could be a lot of two nils again. Yeah. It could be. I think yeah. these four matches are probably dunks. But uh yeah, I mean if Fnatic lose this, the Antarctic tickets are they're refundable, <laughs> but they're still booked right now. So he's going if they lose this match. <laughs> All right. Does anyone have any more EMEA thoughts before we fire Sliggy? I don't have an EMEA four, but I, I thought I would. Um, Sideshow put me on blast last time I was here, so I think like it's only fair to equal it out. <laughs> oh, sure. yeah. and Bre Bren, I gave you a clip, and and Mimi, I know that you were on my side for this one because you called it out on the broadcast. <laughs> if Kyle can find it, and then Sideshow, I, I would want you to actually talk about this because again, you called me out last time in terms of wingman uh, and having his <laughs> and, and, and having his life rounds but there is a there is a couple of <laughs> a couple dude of... it wasn't it wasn't a wingman life round wingman is good for the diffuse but i mean speak oh, your truth this clip King. destroyed me <laughs> oh this one oh dude i'm convinced i'm convinced that oh. their gecko player had never touched the asian before every plant was wrong on in this match Dude, yeah, Havoc was struggling, man. Oh no, was it? Was it? It wasn't Havoc. There it was. I think uh, it was Klaus. Klaus. It was and Klaus. I don't think he's ever played <clears throat> Gecko before. Like, I, I, and, oh. oh, notice how notice how Sliggy, Go the blame from the other analysts being put on the player, not <laughs> little bro. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Where's your blame? No, but that guy's still a little shit for not planning it right. So there we go. <laughs> now we get but, to the real, <laughs> the real cracks if, of it. Okay, if you saw a human, a player, you know, the mm -hmm. gecko himself, he picks up the spike, wanders over, and then he decides to plant not on the closest corner. Even if he planted facing away, you would still be like, why did he walk to that point? <laughs> Uh, yeah, he yeah. He he Wingman doesn't turn, he doesn't push it into the corner, he doesn't do all of that stuff, but he gets the job done and he, he frees you up to be done. able to rifle. It's so valuable. Oh dear, I'm not saying it's valuable, I'm just saying that he gets too much praise. 
Uh, and we got to, if, if we're going to praise him for the good stuff he's going to do, I believe in equality, and we should uh, we should highlight the bad things. <laughs> is that equality? <laughs> yeah, dude, we can't just go. This guy's incredible, and then just not, and then just ignore all of his mistakes. <laughs> I I heard that um, <laughs> I heard that you were threatening the life of Wingman whoa, and whoa, banning whoa, people whoa, whoa. that called you out. <laughs> That's, that's I had not somebody. I had somebody coming into my stream who said Sliggy said that he would like to. I, I can't remember exactly what it was. I like kicked the shit out of little bro or something <laughs> like that. And somebody in your chat said that's animal abuse. They got banned by your mods and they came to my co stream instead. What? <laughs> that's not a, okay. Well, does the defendant have any words? No, let's let's see the proof. Let's see the proof of that, because that is not a chance, man. You're like me when I started streaming, believing in anything the chat said. You fell for it, man. Someone needs to hit you with the deal dough or Starbucks. I, I do think... Find the clip, chat. I, I think this is would be the type of guy who would, like, consider eating Wingman if he was real. That this guy's is getting crazy. I think, I just, I I think, think the dude would. can't plant well. <laughs> so I, think, I think you're like one of those doctors that would hire out a license to kill a lion, and you would go kill Wingman. But it, <laughs> it's in the name of preservation. It's in the name of preservation, and then you have little bro up on your mantle. It's so How is killing a lion an act of preservation? Uh, so the money that they use, so they sell licenses to kill the lions, and the money that they use goes back into pr uh, paying to support the preserve. Um, so it's it's kind of a fucked up system because these preserves don't have enough money otherwise. So they sell yeah. these really well, expensive licenses to rich people. Well, I knew they did that for elephants people. in some it's, countries. It's the case cause... with most endangered animals that they do this. Well, wow! Wow! Okay. What I an mean, incredible that's... system! What an incredible, mm. awful system! That's yeah. fucked. It's Dude, like the ultimate, like, Wingman. poison. There, there's not <laughs> there with Wingman. What would Wingman even taste like? What? <laughs> what? I think, it would, be like, I think he would be on? sweet. Pull but up I also wouldn't yeah, do it. Can you show me? I, I think it, it would just be... I He's think the friend. texture would be quite nice to bite into. I think it would, no. give, it would be a little bit of give. And <laughs> it'd be a little bit of give. It would be, like be like a gummy bear, wouldn't he? <laughs> Dude, how is it? Uh, you lot calling me out for the hatred? You lot talk about eating them. I would never do this on my stream. <laughs> I would. I mean, they fly. respawn, right? They they just rematerialize because isn't that part of the law? Them. Infinite that's food okay. source. Yeah, that's why it's okay, <laughs> okay to shoot them because they're like made out of radionite and shit. So they just they just respawn. So you, it would be okay to just eat them. If just a, it, a little snack. It would actually be unethical not to give them to starving people. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> if they provided agree, calories yeah. and they were infinitely replenishable, it would be unethical not to give them to people who are otherwise starving. All right, well, we, you heard it here first. The Plateau <laughs> Podcast is in support of eating Wigman. <laughs> Let's move on to America's. Sliggy, thank you so much for coming on. Okay. <laughs> go watch his co-stream when he, when he does the thing. And go eat Wigman. <laughs> Actually, don't, please. <laughs> All right, peace, peace, enjoy. Uh, bye, bye. Later. Bye. What the fuck? <laughs> Lord almighty. But I just <laughs> realized, go does Slinky what? have a name? Yes. I'm going to go pee. He's the one person that I don't call their name. Yeah. Well, it, yeah, his name's Steven. I don't Steven even know Liggy. his name. <laughs> Shut up. I'm not no, getting one is. guy. I'm it not actually is. His guy. name is Steven nope. Liggy. That's where Sliggy comes nope. from. It his is. I swear is, to God. His name is not Stephen Liggy. Google Stephen Liggy and you'll find Sliggy Valorant. I'm not Googling Stephen Liggy. His name is Connor. Oh, but that would be confusing because you already have a Connor. That's true. So, unfortunately, <laughs> so he'll have unfortunately, to go by Stephen Liggy. He's Stephen Liggy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is tense, this music. Yeah, this was during uh, Kevin's emo dark phase, his industrial emo phase. <laughs> He's grown past this, though. What is TMV's name? I can't remember TMV's name. I knew it at some point. Thinking though. man. I don't think that's his name. I don't think it is either. I was going to say that, but I repressed myself because of how unfunny it was. 
It doesn't, yeah, you can't really pull off like Trevor Hinking Man's Valorant. <laughs> no, it's not a, not a very common family name that he's got. I actually don't think we know because he was never a pro or anything, so he doesn't even have a liquid. Chris, Christopher, yes, that's his name, yes. Is that real or are we getting one? No, guy? no, 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 no. I, I, it triggered my synaptic memory vault. Yeah, he, it's uh, on Liquipedia because he's signed by a son. You'd never know otherwise, I don't think. Uh, what's his social security number? <laughs> and mother's maiden name. <laughs> I'm not really sure. <laughs> yeah, we can we can find out though. The chat says, I searched Stephen Liggy. My first search result was a drug dealer from Connecticut. So, <laughs> yeah, that's him, actually. That's Liggy. He's just cleaned up his act when he came over the Valorant. Dark times in the UK Valorant, uh, UK CS scene. Hey, he yo. moved to Connecticut and they took up dealing drugs. Drugs? Yeah, uh, no, Sean, don't get excited. We don't have any. <laughs> oh, fuck, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you guys got the freeze pipe sponsorship back. I joined. <laughs> uh, should we wait for? We'll wait for Brent to come back, I suppose. Yeah, he, he I heard his door to? creak. He's coming back. He just Who's finished hosting washing this his segment? hands. Uh, you can. Is Josh. it Brent? I mean, or Brent? Me? Brent. Brent's Do you want it. to? Do I want to host? Yeah. Not really. All right, I'll do it then. That's fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, what's up? Welcome back, and Sean. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Sean Gares. How's it going? Dude, it's going good. Uh, yeah, America's looking not as good as I thought it was. I'm not going to lie. I, I can't wait to get into this. I was, I was pretty high on America's before we watched all the teams play in the regular season. And now I think the other regions are like about even with us. Uh, yeah. Okay. So you're not, you're not necessarily agreeing with the boast to take that all of the level of Valorant is bad. You're just saying that you thought better of America's than what you saw. Oh, I'm not going to lie. I heard you guys talking. And if I had the time and the skill, I was going to Photoshop a background in Antarctica with like EMEA and Boaster behind me. Because those motherfuckers need to be over there. That's the difference. <laughs> <That's, laughs> that, our region might be a little bit bad, but holy fuck, they're fucking... I don't know <laughs> Dude, should have got shot on the NBA section. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Dude. Oh my um, god. Before we kick things off with the analysis, though, um, Kurt wanted us to take a look at the, the team capsules because they are actually, if we do the clout analysis for just a moment here, they, they are a little bit interesting because in the other regions, you've got like Fnatic at the top of EMEA because they have a lot of global appeal. They have tons of like Chinese, Japanese fans, that kind of thing. In this region, we've got one of the teams with the worst bundle is number one because Zelsus is the number one marketer of all time. Sentinels <laughs> at the top. And then you have Leviathan, G2, Cloud9, Loud. No hundred thieves anywhere to be seen loud at fifth nrg not nowhere to be seen either as well the, this america's does feel a little different compared to where we would expect the like clouted orgs to rank on this list i think well not gonna lie like i was on 100 thieves i don't even have the 100 thieves bundle who the fuck bought that shit like <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually think they, they got owned by being a red and black or yeah. the red and black ones are yeah. so fucking boring. It's a dime a dozen. Yeah. They're not Wait, there, and it's boring. And is there skin even red and black or is it gray and black? It's like red, white, black. It's yeah, yeah. it's very similar to the other I red, white, black. I yeah, sleep. I sleep as well. My chat was roasting me for this because they would they were just like, oh, anything red, you just hate. Red equals bad, <laughs> blue equals good. I know the Cloud9 and the Leviathan ones are just really well designed and the color palette's cool. And we've just got this like faux edgy red and black yeah. everywhere. Dude, yeah. Zelsis deserves a Rolex for being able to shill the Send bundle, by the way. <laughs> like that, mm, that's not a great bundle, but whatever. You're winning I'm and you have the greatest marketer in Valorant on your team. I'm utterly shocked by G2. I didn't know they had fans. Yeah, well, <laughs> this is crazy. Like, I Because like uh, the thing is, I look at their Twitter and their Twitter is like, they're trying to tweet like Sentinels and they get like 100 likes. Did they and get like, like a round of nice investment try. and this is like some kind of marketing play to buy their own bundle? Like, my, what's guess happening? Is it's, my guess is it's legacy <laughs> European fans because the org is very popular in Europe from like yeah. League and some of their other stuff. And no. like, that no. brand works and GC also their, their the game GC changer squad? team is yeah. really good and has a okay. lot of fans so my guess is You're it's cooking. coming from not their vc no offense to the vct team players like those guys but the organ is just not 
very cloudy. I, yeah. I disagree. I don't think it's because people are fans at all. I think it's because people looked at the card and went, ooh, I yeah. like Samurai Ninja. <laughs> and then they decided to buy the bundle because of that. Yes. I think that's 100% the reason. Personally, I don't really like the card. I think it's just a bit odd, but I You don't I like swear, Samurai Ninja? It's sick. No. The Samurai Ninja aesthetic with guns and smoke and like, mm, cool. Mm. I, it's just... It's very boring to me, but people love that shit. I think people are just spooning it up. I mean, it's pretty sick how they have, like the G2 logo in the samurai like mask, you know, like that's just their logo. Yeah. yeah that's sick. I like that. It's yeah. yeah. I dude, the, the team slept on having a good bundle, actually, like yeah. just a good player card, to be honest. I, I don't know. They they just it felt like they didn't put much Send effort yeah. into it. How the hell Send is Loud number five? The anime titty bundle. That's my question. Loud number right? five is the only, the only green only, bundle. The only green bundle. The only green bundle. How the That's fuck what is I'm number five right and now? And like, their skin is actually good. Like I yeah, actually really like the Loud good. one. I think it's clean. I, I like the player it. card isn't though. The sure. player card. I, the player card I, is I, bad. Personally, I'm not a fan of the art style, and yeah. also it's very like it is just it's too much like. You know the idea of like show don't tell. The idea of like give give somebody a feeling with the image. Don't literally put fans there. Like woo, I like loud. <laughs> it's it's just a bit too much telling you to be a fan with the bundle rather than evoking the feel of loud mm -hmm. with the image. In my opinion, that makes okay. it a little meh. But I get it. I thought it would go crazier because loud have a big fan base. It, it, Are I mean, the it, that's why it is the fit, same? Probably worldwide or did they adjust per region i don't know how that works Ooh, they're the same worldwide, i wonder I if it's 20 because 25 dollars on an average brazilian salary is a lot of money true yeah that's yeah. true and it's still Very doing true. well i mean all i'm saying is i'm i'm waiting for the, the chinese bundles to come out because i i green is my favorite color i want to wolverhampton wolves I don't, no, wolverhampton no, wolves. no i mean <laughs> dragon ranger gaming I think yeah. I don't know what they're going to be coming. Out. I just need another. I just need another green bundle. There's only one green team so far, and it's loud. And then maybe gentle mates, but gentle mates, gentle mates do have a cool skin bundle. Don't I'm not even like, gonna lie, guys. I didn't even know this was a, a team. What, what are we <laughs> looking at right now? Dragon Dude. Ranger Gaming. This is my new favorite team. This is actually insane. What? Yeah, I just I'm worried they're gonna go for all blue with a little bit of a green accent. I need I need. Uh, I'm buying that. I don't know. Do you I know? Need, do you know what the thing? Do you know what the bundle? thing is in the logo? Wait, are they any good? It's what a dragon, it? isn't it? Dragon my balls across your mouth. <laughs> Sorry. God damn somebody, it. Somebody got me with that during a co-stream and I just you. had to try. You uh, son of a bitch. That's insane. My mind slipped for a second. Holy <laughs> fuck. Dude. Uh, Dude right yeah. after the gullible oh. section, we all exactly. fell for it. This is I insane. Exactly. I fell oh, for that shit, man. Imagine how crazy, though, the the Dragon D's uh, classic with, like, the lock-in Pacific oh. green knife would be. Like, yeah. oh, no, it's America's is green. Who the fuck is... Why do the colors change? Yeah, they, I don't think they really thought them out. Yeah. But yeah, that, yeah. That, that, the America's lock-in knife, though, is... That's my favorite knife. I it's use that really all the time. clean. I do think that it's was so just good. a big corporation people not talking to each other moment. And now yeah. the, like, one yeah. knife that is regional is not the right colors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um right let's get on with the game then let's let's talk some analysis so one of the sloppiest games that i saw all week was this c9 leviathan game Ugh. and oh my word slippity sloppy oily muddy men as bren would love to say Dude, this was... and cloud nine came out with the win in the end which is a huge win for them to start the season this was a this was the mud bowl we were we, yes. I, we, we thought the crew furia was going to be the mud bowl of 2024 and we were wrong it would it had already happened when it got to a scent i was like these these are oiled up men yes. the mud has reached peak viscosity and like oh it's viscous like they're slapping each other everyone's they, listening trying to grab advantages trying to grapple each other they were missing each other oxy slipping out Dude, everything was going everywhere. I couldn't believe this final map. This was the Mud Bowl of 2024. I pray we get a rematch between these two teams as well so that we can sell this. This this. We need to be selling them as the undercard match, I think, ahead of like the fucking set 100 Thieves match of the Clout game because holy moly. Like it was it was poopy to begin with. And then map the first three two maps hit. were bad. Yeah. yeah first the first two were maps bad. were kind of boring as well because it was yeah. like bad yeah. Valorant, but not yeah. even close. It wasn't like and then funny, bad Valorant. was like crazy. Easy. Dude, it, it just crazy. started heating up more and more and more and just I got mean, bonkers. The overtime fucking 
everyone just lost physical control of their body and became a gelatinous mass when they got on the attacking <laughs> side in overtime and could not comprehend a single idea. Like, the amount of overtime runs, it was just, oh, we're going to fucking we're gonna run into A, and then it comes down to, like, a 1v3, and then someone wins just the stupidest clutch amount. It was just... I was yep. shocked. Can I can I hit you with a hot take? Please. The the community narrative coming out of this match is that Aspas carried get him some help. I've never seen a player with more kills with less like round winning impact. I swear to God. On a set especially. Dude, so many impactless frags. I mean, on, on, on Icebox, though. On Icebox, popped off. Like, Icebox looked awesome. Map 2, Map 3, he's not integrated with the team. He's not entry, and he's not, like, in the right place. He's, like, last alive playing for the clutch or just... Yeah, I mean here he just sends it in. <laughs> but <laughs> but this in, fucking around. What is this so so funny. doing? Dude. I love this. Was this the round where Oxy's is... like, God, I want to updraft over this yeah. so bad? God. And then he gets the dash back and thinks about doing it again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I hate that you guys are excited about this game. I was literally tearing my fucking hair out watching this game. <laughs> yeah, because it's, it's so funny. <laughs> it's it's so because bad. like, god damn it, I'm so sick of teams like gaslighting me into thinking they're good because leviathan is not good <laughs> leviathan is not good after not, watching this no. game yeah. like they're not good enough they're not a super team they're not a nope. top three team in america's this was horrible to watch yeah like, i got so gaslit about this team from kickoff because i saw okay sentinels loss was close i felt like we actually saw some interesting things uh in the loud game i liked what calm was bringing with some of the the like the early gecko stuff they were kind of kidding with the meta osmos was looking solid I really was just like, this is going to be a great team. They need time. And then this debut match has lost me. <laughs> like, all of my faith. All, all of my faith. I feel faith. lied to. I feel scammed. I feel like the guy who clicked on the, hi, I'm John Discord, give me $1,000, and gave John Discord $1,000, <laughs> and now I have no money. Yeah. And Leviathan is... <laughs> yeah. I've never been scammed more in my life. And honestly, <laughs> I, I can't even say... Let me check real quick. I think, uh, yeah... Is, how do I pronounce the head coach name? Gokid? Gokid? Gokid, yeah. Yeah, Gokid. Go Bro, like, that, he needs to be on Fraud Watch. Like, ASAP. I'm not even trolling. Like, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm questioning why the hell they picked Sunset and put Osbos on Phoenix. And then I'm questioning why on earth they ran that Ascent comp. Didn't have any unique Sage Walls. No unique looks. Like, what in the... F Bro, like, this team... I, I, feel, is... I feel like the comps they played that were weird were like them trying to look at something that like seems cool on Valoplant, and when you click on VLR before you watch your game, you think, oh, that's a neat idea. <laughs> like, like, I feel but like the... actually watching it, there was so little substance to actually justify why they yes. were making these weird yes. changes. It, like, it looks like on Sunset, they just looked at Loud's gameplay and thought, that looks really cool. And yeah. I don't know who on the team thought that, but it looks like they literally... Because it, it is the same comp that Loud play on yes. Sunset, right? And, uh, it and is so, a Sova uh, instead, but other than that... Uh, I, thought, wait, Loud I think Loud Sova? plays Sova on that map because I they need the trip break, right? Because I, I thought the same thing. When I was watching it, I was like, oh, this is so similar, but they're running this over. And I forgot that Loud also plays Sova. Oh, they map. do now, yeah. Yeah. So they, they were running similar kind of like setups in terms of where the utility was being placed, but all of the coordination and the like ideas and how to run the team comp was just <laughs> so bad gone yeah and yeah that's a disaster like we were saying earlier about dfm if you're a team that's coming up with variations on someone else's idea and it's new and it's throwing something different oh now you've got my attention yeah. if you're trying to copy and doing it badly oh my god we've got issues dude on on ascent when they were in that sage i was initially very happy about it because i was like oh we i ran a sage on ascent when i was on 100 thieves like this could work and I, sh I st showed all my stream all the walls that yeah. we used and like why it could work. And when I saw them use all of those walls and nothing new, and the timings that they used the walls were bad, like how, <laughs> the like, how they were incorporating the rounds. Like, round like, everything was bad. Double satchel did. <laughs> That we watch where oxy was doing yeah. weird shit he's double satcheling he's pathing for logs and then they're walling <laughs> themselves off from him so they cannot yeah. trade in flooding sight <laughs> it's literally just go die my son go into the ocean yes. fall into the depth guys I, I sent kurt round like round three of icebox this is a cloud nine clip like cloud nine lose this round and lev win but th i just want to show you this round just to show like the level of play in this series and why i was immediately on tilt Kurt, play the clip. 
Round three. <laughs> <Cloud nine>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Dude. Okay. So here we go. Back a little bit further. Kurt. It needs to go back. It needs to go back before. Oh. It needs to go back further than this. So you can see right here. Okay. So Zeppa has the cutoff line at A. He's like at pipes and he's kind of jiggling. Rooney's on the rotate, right? And Rooney, for some reason, leans over A and shoots a blind dart, which then, for some reason, causes Zeppa to leave this cutoff ang. And you can watch the lurking Killjoy on attack just wait this dart out, hit this timing. The Observer will cut to Zeppa, who's jiggling left sight. He, for some reason, gives up his spot by throwing a slow as the solo player and then peeks left sight unaware. I was literally losing my goddamn mind. The biggest round of the, like, the opening half, and already I'm just like, dude, this is over. Like, Lev is going to win this shit 2-0. So when I saw Lev in the next two maps pick dog shit comps and just have horrible fundamentals, I was like, bro... How are they losing to Cloud9 with two new players? Like, this is yeah. so unacceptable. This is so unacceptable. Yeah, yeah we, were, we were doing a co-stream, and we were, I think, yeah, round three, round five, round seven, like, they got off to a really hot start, and we were like, this is over. Oh, Aspas popped knives in, like, a 5v3 yeah. or something. Yeah, because, <laughs> by the way, he, he yeah, is all in post. for context, for people who didn't watch this live, map one was a 13 to 7, and Aspas was plus 22. Like, they were... Aspas was absolutely fucking dominating them. And that was like, fine, okay. I mean, the ideas weren't super great, but at least they're owning. And then it just, the, the fucking horrific crumble. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I said, I think last time I was on the show, I was like, the problem with this team is it's dubbed a super team. And I'm like, I was like, where the, where's the fragging going to come from? Where, where is it going to come from? Because I know it's going to come from Aspas and King. And you would expect Tex to be that third player. But historically, like, Common Mazzino, they are not fraggers. Like, they are... They... I, I don't know. I don't think Mazzino is meant for a super team. Like, you know, I think he's a good support player. But on a team like this, where he's probably speaking a second language, yeah, in addition yeah. to the struggles he had last year, like, I'm going to keep it real. Like, I don't think this team is going to make playoffs. They're not going to make tournaments. Uh, they have so Not much make work playoffs. To no, uh, did you? Was that your expectation coming into the year? Because that is no. really low. No, is this I, your readjusted expectation? It's my readjusted one. I didn't have them at two yesterday. Like when I saw you guys put them at two, I was like, "Oh, there's no way they're two. There's no way they're two. Who put them at two? I think on the oh, broadcast, you guys. Oh, did you it. guys did meet me. Uh, let's not talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's Dude. not talk about that. I immediately uh, was like, "Ooh, I don't know about that." That like, was that was that was that was one Christy Frierson, and and he can take the blame for that one. Oh, but I I will say I was rating them highly because because I I drank the Kool Aid after kickoff. I it wasn't great, but I liked some of the early ideas I was seeing. I thought there's a chance there's they're gonna be good. I was like, I wouldn't say I was on board with two. But I was still thinking ahead of this match that Leviathan could Bro. be like a top four team. Because also I was in expecting their group, them to come in and fuck. Dude, in but, their group, who are they competing with? Like exactly. Loud, who have got such bad scrim issues and like didn't have their visas yeah. in time. And then 100 Thieves and like, they actually have a winnable group if they had got their shit together. No, no, yeah. no. Don't think about their group. Look at their strength of schedule. Look who they play next. They're fucked. They, <laughs> yeah. They're actually screwed. They play Sentinels oh. and NRG oh next. Oh my god. <laughs> Like, this team is yeah. dead, and they fucked around with those comps, and they got burned. They fucked around, and they found out, and they're about to be 0-3 and, and not make playoffs. Like, they're done. They're done. This team okay, is done. What about, in terms of done for playoffs, sure, but do you think this team implodes as well? Because when you have that level of expectation, and yeah. Aspas literally said in an interview at the beginning of the year, I joined this team because I thought I wanted to be on a roster that could win a championship. He left Loud to yeah. join Lev in order to win a championship. That he also doesn't... wanted to play with Nosworth yeah. as well, and that didn't work out. I mean, True. he won the championship yeah. of money. He's winning that. <laughs> He's got probably yeah. got a lot. Dude, the Lev bundle sales actually might be making up for it. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, if he was getting a cut of... in that. I don't, no, they, I don't yeah, know. They, I think they, 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 need, they need a change. They need if they some kind of change. negotiate their contract right, they get a cut. No trouble. And Aspas yeah. specifically, I think, was supposed to get like a cut of jersey sales in Brazil or something. Sure. Uh, it was something like yeah. that. That makes sense. That but I, I really think this team is going to implode. Like, yes. the, the streets have been talking. I've I've heard rumblings that like there's there's some that things aren't all sunny. 
yes. in, yeah. in the Leviathan camp. I don't know change? how true that stuff is, but looking from the outside, seeing them playing these weird comps, seeing them off rolling Ospus, watching the game and looking at the player reaction cams, like you see Calm trying to yap, like he's trying his hardest, like, guys, we can just do this. And then it's just, you look at like Mizuno's camera, and it's just troll despair. Staring yes. into the void. It's like the vibe does not look like it's there. They no. don't look like a team when they're playing in the server. I, I, I really think this is a roster that is, unless some magic happens with the current strength of schedule with these next two matches, I feel like there's a strong likelihood that they, they fall apart before stage two. Yes. This, this might be crazy, but a positive EV change, I think, would be Pancada coming in from Azino. Yes, that would be a great change. Uh, on smokes. Yeah. But also, then you're at risk of running, turning this team into like a very quite clicky if stuff doesn't go right again. So I, I can definitely imagine Pancada and Daspas going off, and I don't know. It's, I, uh, um, but I, I think it would be better than what they're currently running. Not to blame all uh, at all on Mazina, because it's, it's clear, like you're saying, Sean, that the ideas aren't working either. They just yeah. don't have good ideas of what they want to do. Dude, uh, on a scent, I was just reminded when you were talking about the Sage Walls, I'm pretty sure we saw Tex use his wall attack side when they were hitting the B side on Ascent to get into the window angle yes. like five oh times and get pre-fired every single time. Yeah, and because the timing was so bad. It. The timing was so yeah. bad. You need to time it with the guy entering the site so you're in a high low. Yeah. But like, if he's going up ahead of the hit, so I sent Kurt this clip. Look at this shit. Like, they're... It's like, oh, look, guys, we're getting B main control. We threw a slow over the wall. Bro, you got shit. The KO <laughs> rotates over. They don't have a main control. There's five in spawn. Like, the round is so readable. This is a dog shit round. Like, Cloud9 just were given the answers in, in some of the phases of this game. Like, I don't know. I, I am lacking yeah. hope right now for this team. I liked what they did on some of their execs with like the slow heaven got them the pistol round win and there was another slow that they were doing that I can't remember what it was on their attack side too. But, oh, I mean, oh my lord, that rocket as well. I mean, like how, dude, it's, it's so bizarre <laughs> watching this team. It's like it's sucking the skill out of them. It really showcases, I think, that even when you put good players together, there's absolutely no guarantee that it works. Talking I think about Bustio Cloud9, because he's not talking about Cloud9 ones. Yeah, genuinely. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I didn't dude, know you guys were gonna go this deep. That's fine. Um, um, yeah. I mean, honestly, well, this is a huge win for Cloud Nine. What I said is like Cloud Nine didn't look good, but that's okay. They got a win against a team that should have been pretty high up. That yeah. might steal wins from some of the teams in the group remaining. And yeah. now their strength of schedule is fantastic. Like yes. now, Cloud Nine is in an excellent place. They got their hard win with the least amount of practice possible, and now they're in a great spot. So while they, they look sloppy, BG, they can grow. Fury, MIBR, and they clinch playoffs. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Ooh, uh, they might. They you, might, might. Be, you might be underrating MIBR a bit there. We no, didn't I, get to I do see think them MIBR is legit, but I think that's going to be a, a close game. We'll see yeah, how it develops throughout the season. But I, yeah. I do think this is really possible now for, for C9 to make playoffs. And honestly, seeing this change, I was super uninspired. I kind of had no idea why they were bringing Rooney back. And I'm still not super inspired, but I think I saw some things that can be positive. I liked some of the stuff I was seeing from Moose after he got over just being completely unable to shoot back the first few games. I think that Gosh, guy has yeah. a lot, of, like he was within every shot on Ascent, but, or on uh, Xbox that is. But towards the end, started to see some better stuff from him, and he was legitimately a sick player when he was grinding in Tier 2. And Oxy, I think, has continued to step up to the stage really well. Sure, it was against a team that was kind of a mess, but there's still some shooters on that squad, and he was doing well for himself there. This is a squad that's not, like, super inspiring, but I could definitely see them kind of at least, like, sneaking into playoffs with this one. I, I just want to end this topic by bringing up a tweet from Com's dad. And, dude, Com's dad, loveliest person and just there supporting his son, knowing that Com isn't going to give up. I know that Com is putting his heart into it too. Like you can tell from watching the 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 like player reactions and looking at the way that he's communicating and he's heavy mid-rounding. But also the final sentence here while I was reading this, it just Dude. absolutely sent me. 
to that person who said put com up for adoption not cool if every pro was put up for adoption after an off game then they would be all orphans that's that's like that's wild who is saying that stuff to the guy's dad that's just bonkers but it's a one guy moment man that is a one guy internet moment sure yeah but i mean it's it's made an impact on him hasn't it but yeah that's just dude it'd be so funny if it hadn't clearly (laughs) gone to him but yeah rough situation because that's a lot of players with high expectations who want a lot more let's move on to the next game though um g2 played against evil geniuses and Bren convinced us all <laughs> to swap over to EG. Dude, I think it kind of made sense I, at the time, but Lord Almighty, were you wrong? I think it made a ton of sense, but yeah, holy shit. Dude, G2 looks so good. G2 had fantastic ideas that they were throwing into the mix. Ge- genuinely, I, the, the swap to for, for Leaf to be playing Sentinel doesn't make a lot of sense on paper, but Valen was popping about it in the post-game interview that he had about saying like it's a perfect fit for him. And honestly, I'm kind of feeling it. Like he he was he was just kind of defined into his role. But Leaf is the second whole, coming of Alpha Year. This this whole team looked <laughs> looked He's awesome, back. I think, with Icy coming in so late. I thought it looked really, really clean. And partly that was just EG kind of like floundering, I guess, on, on map two. Um, which which maybe makes them look a lot better because EG went away from that deadlock comp, I guess, being worried that it was gonna get counter strated to a degree. Worried that there was there was too much footage on it, because I think they played it twice in kickoff. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, my what, what I walked away from was that man, I I kind of overreacted, I think, to G two playing poorly. But um, yeah, it was just mad impressive how well they played, considering yeah. IC came in late too. What I see from G two is like the antithesis of Leviathan. Leviathan is a team of a bunch of insane players being put together and like not clicking at all and not having any clear identity. G two is the ultimate like we are Valen's little pawns and we are <laughs> committed to his idea. We are playing the kind of Valorant he wants. We trust our hero, our goat, and uh, honestly, it looked really good. I see didn't have like an insane performance, but I, I actually really liked his his raise on the first map in Lotus. He was just being the guy who was full committing in. I think they actually talked about this in the interview. They don't need a crazy star duelist. They need someone who will entry, who will commit with the team, who will buy into the system and will set up leaf for, for trades. And that's exactly what was happening. Icy was taking sites. He was uh, normally maybe getting his one and then dying off. And then Leaf or Trent was coming in because they have some insane firepower, some insane riflers on that like second entry role and cleaning up shop. Uh, and once we got over to Icebox, I, I thought that this was an, an interesting that comp they played with the kind of double scan variant on the like the KO Gecko that a lot of people have been playing. And I thought they did it really well. It played super nicely into this Harbor Viper composition. And I mean, obviously EG was not playing particularly well in this match, but this is, a, this is an opener that gives me a lot of like kind of credit in G2 for a, a, a team that I think will have a lot of upward mobility in America's. I think they've learned very quickly yeah. from what the meta is as well. They came into the year, nobody really knew what the meta was, and they came in with some unusual ideas. Their compositions were strange, I think, compared to what other people were running. But um, they kind of got justified a little bit. They were running like solo KO Viper Omen on Ascent, and actually some other teams have started running that, and that does look viable. And then they've changed up their compositions to add more meta elements in with like the, the Icebox comp too. So I, I, I rate the improvement. Yeah, I think G2 looked really good. I, I think their Lotus, the way Valen calls, just getting map control, you could see they were kind of pushing and pulling off of A and C really well. I've always thought he was super good at that. And this was a game where I thought Icy looked a little sketch. Like he wasn't settled in. And it's someone that, you know, like everyone has been telling me like to look out for this guy. Like this yeah. guy is going to be really good. So I think this is the worst we'll see out of him. And I'm pretty optimistic after what we saw. Like, okay, like I, I will say one thing that I learned after watching that game and the Fnatic game is like, I'm not a huge believer in Harbor Viper anymore. Like this no, year no. is so different than last year. And it completely took Apoth out of that game. Uh, a player that I thought was looking very optimistic, like promising and his lurk timings were really good. When I watch people play Harbor, it just takes them out of the game. You know, like you're so util based. All your util basically tells your opponents where you are and it doesn't do much to set you up. So I feel like if you really struggle with creating those openings and Forsaken's pretty much like the only one that's nailed this other than like Tui's like masking where he is, it's so hard. 
And I mean, Boaster and Apoth kind of found that out the hard way. Yeah, yeah. I, I think also just the, the, the how prevalent the the double initiator stuff is with the the gecko KO or or gecko insert X initiator combos just mm-hmm. counter it so well. If you're getting like KO flash dizzied over top of your wall and getting flooded through, it just dominates. I mean, we we saw that in the Fnatic game against Heretics, and I, I think you saw that here too uh, for G2 against CG. I was. I, I can't believe that I sold a little bit of my leaf stocks right before he uh, is about to go nuclear playing Killjoy, I think. I've been a massive leaf believer, but from he played um, only three maps of Killjoy last season, last year, and they all didn't look very good. So I wasn't very excited about this move at all. It just seemed like a really weird one to me. He didn't get any value on the roll last time he played it. But he was playing it... Now that I've gone back and had a look, he was playing it on Pearl at the beginning of the season. And that was... That's a really difficult spot to play. If you remember the the meta where you're just holding on B kind of on your own, waiting to get yeah. dumped. And then and then you have to be like jump peeking and grabbing info and stuff. And it just... It was a weird one. And then he played it towards the end in LCQ when, he, when they changed their Fracture company. He played Killjoy on his own. So it, it did amaze me to hear Valen say in the interview, though, that they just tried Leaf on KJ, and they were going to be trialing multiple people, like either a Sentinel or a Duelist player. And they just, as soon as Valen saw Leaf play KJ, he was like, yeah, we just need a Duelist. This guy's playing KJ. This play, guy's playing Sentinel. He's just going to own. That's, yeah. Uh, I- the Leaf stocks, for me, continue to rise. I should have sold a long time ago, but they continue to rise. <laughs> Yeah, t- like tangential thing. Like I thought they picked really good comps here. Like I really like Omen right now as a second controller in Icebox. It seems like the teams running Omen have immense control over the map. Like I sent Kurt this clip, the bonus from G2 against EG. And watch how they approach it against this Harbor Viper, which has such little util. Like keep in mind this Harbor Viper, they only are working with a Sova Dart and a drone. Those things can be broken. So they're scaling up behind this cascade. There's the orb on top of the container. It can be refreshed by the omen one way. And right now, you know, EG knows this. They know they have to keep pace. So they pop the orb, but they drop it. They're fighting. If you pause here, Kurt, pause. You can see right here, Leaf is aggressing mid tube <laughs> simultaneously as these two are about to dizzy flash long B, simultaneously as they throw threw a one-way for belt over at A, and they are prodding out A to break the turret. So they are getting full map control on this bonus against a comp that will really struggle to get it back. And it just shows this round is a clear vision into why I think they got comp diffed here, EG. Like, I, I don't like the Harbor Viper. I think you have to take a lot of risks. And the changes in Icebox, the nerfs to Jet, the nerfs to Sky, having Sova as the initiator... I just don't like it. The nurse, the Viper. Yeah. yeah, it's just a little worse. I, I agree with you. And I think that was one of the issues with Fnatic running it on uh, this map as well when they lost to Heretics. It, it's also amusing in this round to just see Leaf walk down tube and own the person playing mid while he's playing KJ on this map. Yeah. Like he's going to. I mean, it's if insane he really timing, does, though. Yeah, if he gets with that, like if he finds those kind of timings and really grows into the role, he's going to he's gonna go nuts because his, his understanding of the game and his. Aim are fantastic. It's what made him like one of the top duelists of last year. So, uh, yeah, I've, I'm, I was very high on G2 at the start of the year. I think a lot of us were. And it didn't work for some reason. But this is looking promising. Um, do you think EG are only going to be able to get wins if they can anti-opponents? Maybe. There, that was definitely win cons for them early on um, last year. And that might still be the case. I, I think, yeah, if it, it's, it's not exactly promising. I, I don't know. It's so weird because we haven't really seen too much from them. Like uh, now that they've changed the Icebox comp, they clearly don't want to run the Deadlock comp that, that, was, that was going for them. Because I think that's another win comp for them is running something quite unique that's got yeah. a lot of ideas and forcing your opponents to react to it and adapt to it. That's like yeah. a very, that's a very EG focus very early last year kind of, kind of thing um which that's hard to do that's hard to that you can't just keep reinventing new comps over the course of a regular season um but anting does get easier for you too over the course of a season like you're gonna have even more footage to watch for a lot of these teams i don't think they're out by any means but it's it's a short stage one split and you're 
with every single loss, like two losses already is going to look really bad for the overall record, I think, for them. Mm. And I, I can't remember what group they're in overall, like who they're going to be competing against in that regard. But um, they're yeah, in the I mean, easier Cloud9, group. Dude, Cloud9, I think these matches are winnable. Like with the exception of Sentinels and NRGs, it gets later. But by, by that point, you should have more footage to work on for both of those teams. But I think it needs to be one with Cloud9 and crew. Like those are those are must wins to have any chance for EG. I think they're so often playing with a firepower differential as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel yeah. like that's one of the other big issues. I mean, for them. Judge Mo this game like it's the worst game I've like seen yeah. from him like ever. I think. Yeah. Like the it was just a massive underperformance across the board, and I'm I'm hopeful as as someone who's a fan of him and kind of had had some good faith in the CG team that they. would they have a lot of potential going in, hoping it's just an off game because we did see like some stuff from like Derek. I I, I I don't know. It's just like it's such a complete wipeout from them on Icebox that it's honestly a little hard for me to rate them because I the obvious thing is like oh they're gonna be bad they're they're gonna fall apart. But with their kind of history of being able to anti history of like. Potter is a coach, like when she gets more time with a player, when you can build like the fundamentals of the team a little bit more, it improves. But it's also so tough to to hit something like that twice. This to me almost feels like it might be like not 2023 EG, but like 2022 EG again, where they show potential, where they have the big Andy Strat games, where they upset an opponent, but for the most part, struggle to inch it over and get kind of firepower diffed. Yeah. Like that's yeah. that's that, kind of where I, I stand I on them right now. I forgot about Jorgmo and the performing as well. I think if that becomes a rarity, like if that's if that was just a one off, it is the like Jorgmo, the first time we've seen it to yeah. this extent from him. And I, so I'm willing to hold that a little bit because it, we do talk about that firepower diff between like you think about Crew and Cloud9, those upcoming matches that they've got. If Jorgmo is hitting, I think that looks way better because you remember in kickoff, man, Jorgmo was playing Race and the Jet and he was taking liberties. He was walking yeah, yeah. them, man. Yeah. It, it was it was unreal uh, only a the couple of weeks well. ago. It was just yeah, walking the deadlock, deadlock too. Lock. So <laughs> I, if it is just a one off, I think you the, the these series, we potentially would be looking at EG in a different light, even though the comp definitely gets outvalued these days on Icebox. But if Jorgmo was having a good game, I think I think we might be singing their praises a little bit more and be yes. more hopeful. It's just very difficult to tell. Because yeah. as it stands, if we're only reacting to that last game, you would think that they would get diffed in terms of the firepower against yeah. a team like Cloud9 and Crew. I, I will say, I do have faith for them to like fix their icebox and like realize like that that's behind the meta and like kind of like realize why they lost that game yeah. in that way. Yeah. I think this is a team who responds well to losses as we've seen in the past and can make those adaptations. I just don't think it's going to be them shooting to be a magical top dog in the league. I think they're going to mm -hmm. be middle of the pack competitor who if they have tape on team can punch up, can find an upset. But I right now I really don't expect it to be another yeah. miracle or and anything. And something something I'll like shed insight into. You guys interviewed Potter, someone interviewed Potter like after the first game, you know how they did the coach interviews. Yeah. And if you read between the lines, she basically says like, yeah, we need to start better because when we start slow, like, like she, if you read between the lines, like the comms are missing, players are a little bit inexperienced and they're a little shell-shocked. So like when we get the momentum, things are good. But when we don't, things are awful on the stage. And they lost all the pistols in this series. Yeah. Mm. And I, I can relate. That's how I felt uh on 100 thieves versus Fnatic the second time around because it was our first stage game because we had covid the first like two games and i felt like i took both my timeouts i think in the first half of bind because of what potter's describing and it, that's a very difficult thing to overcome it's a very difficult thing like you have to that's like an emotional thing that you have to kind of work on behind the scenes so i'm interested to see you know if eg has slow starts you know, like, what is that going to look like in the future? Mm. Uh, the fact that Jorgamo did have a bit of a rough game set up for Bustio's excellent tweet afterwards, <laughs> where he showed that the EG World Championship <laughs> roster oh players, all of them had gone negative and put up, like, stinker stat lines. Apart from Demon1, who played well, and you could argue Ethan as well, actually, because he was playing more of like a setup kind of role. But mm -hmm. still, I mean, the the ratings were not there for the EG team, which I think is <laughs> such a... This is such a great tweet because it showcases the thing that we're talking about with Leviathan earlier on and the thing that we're talking about with DFM earlier, that the team structure and the way that you play is way more important than just the people that you have on the roster. And sometimes roster changes 
are good because they just change the team structure, not so much the the actual yeah. people that you have on there or their firepower differential as well. But a very funny one that I think transitions nicely into us talking about Demon 1 and Ethan and the rest of NRG because they they saw that Loud were coming in, limping, hobbling back from Belfast, jet-lagged, and they said, ah, a chance to shit on them. <laughs> <laughs> they just smoked them second map, and it looked like Loud wanted to go home on Sunset. But the first one was very fun. Loud were shooting in that first map. Holy yeah. shit, I mean, the were clutches in the first half were absurd from Loud. Yeah, they won a 1v3, I think, with less, and then a 1v2 with somebody else that both broke the economy of NRG. Um, and then, yeah, yeah it, NRG it ended up winning like some clutches later on with Marv. They, that... they ran out of gas, right, yeah. by map two. You could see it watching them. Because they with the shots they were hitting, and they were matching them pound for pound on Breeze, um, dude, they, it, it, yeah, okay, they haven't had time to scrim or even touch the fucking game since, when did they say, like, the 20th? Since they, I, I yeah, think it was since the literally Madrid since like the end of Madrid. I think they literally said the twentieth of March was the last time Which they had like is almost three weeks that. ago. That's crazy. That's like a massive, massive deficit in terms of the time you've had to, to scrum and practice. Um, so it, yeah, it was just inevitable they were going to lose this game, like for sure. You have to cut them some slack for for losing it, which I'm sure most people are. No one's no one's really expecting them to win this one. Um, but yeah, definitely. When when we were watching, it was like ah, oh, they've just petered out. They want to go to bed. Like in EU time, it was like three in the morning. It's like they just want to go to bed. At this it was point. a very I mean, late day as well. Yeah, it was a really late. Yeah, day. Yeah, the first game was super long. They're the second yeah. match of the day. It ends up like yeah, you got to cut them slack. But I also do want to give a lot of credit to NRG in that second map because I thought their their implementation of the Sentinels comp looked really really nice. I mean, like the all their execs look well put together. Demon One on the raise looked pretty good. Most of his kills weren't because he was <laughs> playing raise, but because he's Demon One. But, yeah, he just uh, didn't. He wasn't using utility yeah. half the time. He was just running around fucking owning them. Yeah, literally just like would have nade satchels and just like sprints around a corner and just like dominates quick as he's falling asleep at his computer. <laughs> <laughs> he's like the Sandman. He comes for you while you're falling asleep. <laughs> yeah, I, I came away feeling good about NRG and feeling good about the team system overall. They definitely played a little more, like more ideas, more set ideas of what they wanted to do. Um, less completely puggy, but still with those opportunities for the players to get that individual um, opportunism going. Uh, and yeah, Demon 1 actually got value out of all of his ults, despite the fact he just kind of bounced along and yeeted them into <laughs> <laughs> random corners. Yeah, I think this was... The, the first map, like I said, was like kind of like a heads-up game where I think NRG kind of played them straight up and loud... Loud just played Breeze really well. Sadak can call off rotations really well. They know the timings are on the map. Unlucky, they lost both pistols. The second map, though, was just an absolute domination of this comp. It was, it was like basically a team that could really pounce on another team that couldn't adjust a lot of the things that they had shown. And without a senti, there's only so many things you can do in this game so i sent kurt like i'm looking actually for the second clip right now um it's the play where marv tps into the top mid smoke Does anyone know what round that is um oh, that was to be honest i blanked out a lot of sunset because it was such a role i can't i can't really remember it was an insane round was um, marv finding the timings on, like to pin to the a link players yeah oh it was off yeah barrier. at the early yeah. round off barrier. yes no i do remember which round you mean yeah it was uh, off barrier yeah, it was just right at the beginning of one of the rounds. So yeah, it's a great unfortunately they just won every single <laughs> round. So yeah, so it's, it's hard to find because they're just winning all of them. Uh, well, I know that he got like a three K in it. So if I go to VLR and look at the performance, three K Marv, he got two of them. Oh, round seven it. or round nine? It's round seven. Okay, I got it. There you go. Okay, so Kurt, can you play round seven first? The one I just sent you. It was sick. Well, so, some context for this as well. Loud were catching these mid lurks if they were in the mid round every single time when teams yeah. tried to do it against them. So the context for this round is pause, 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 pause. Okay, so you can see Sentinels throwing hella util at A, right? This is something I used to call a lot in actually Counter-Strike. There was a strat that we would run called No Loop, where we would throw all of our util out long A on Dust 2, and 
because you would keep the rotator at A, you knew you could dry run out mid. Simultaneously, you should throw a lurk smoke on B though to keep the two people on B. But you can see what has happened. They've thrown a lot of util in the air. There's no senti on loud, so there's a gap. There's a gap in mid and Mar they understand that. So they smoke top mid and he immediately TPs in it. And all of that noise that's happening with this util is shielding that sound. So play it again, Kurt. Like you can see right now, Loud is so unaware of this happening, but this is like a deep level anti-strat that yeah. would never work against certain comps, against certain teams, but they knew for a fact that Loud would bite because they have to bite. And I love that like the experience on Marv to throw that one way there. It's just, you understand you killed the three players A, you understand the two players remaining are B, you don't want to throw flat smokes on the choke. You want to throw one ways to like lock out the site. Like everything NRG did in this best of three was like amazing to watch. Like yeah. I am so sold on them being a top level team in our region right now. I'm so sold. Yeah. Well, my, my question for you is, do they win every single game that they have left? Because can we put their strength of schedule? Yeah, here? let's see it. Ooh. They've taken down the most difficult team in the Omega back on right now. Oh, well, let me let me read it out for you, and that'll help the audio listeners anyway uh, as well. So NRG, the next game is against Furia. Win. Then Leviathan. Win. Then MIBR. Win. Then Evil Geniuses. Win. Win. Then Hundred Thieves. Close game. Close, yeah. So way. that's the final game. That's their last game is against Hundred Thieves. And it Thieves. probably won't end up mattering because there's no way yeah. that like both those teams haven't clinched playoffs by then. Mm. Right. And Percy, Louder though. already zero and one, so. Oh, no, they're not competing against Loud, are they? They're competing against Sentinels for, like, top of the group. But, uh, you know, it's actually going to be a race, I think. Because they don't have to play against each other and because NRG have beaten Loud, this is going to be a genuine race that comes down to, like, possibly even map differential towards the end as to who has the top seed heading into playoffs. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think there's no way they're not making playoffs. I think there's a very high chance it's, it's, it's top dog here because... I think that 100 Thieves game will be the closest. It's hard to tell what form will be like by then. But I was I was pretty happy with what I saw. We'll talk more about it later. But I was pretty happy with what I saw from 100 Thieves uh, in their match against Sentinels, even though it ended in a loss there. So, but yeah, NRG, I mean, looking incredible against Loud. It does feel like they have a real chance to like be the number one. And if you look at this roster, you look at the history of these players, I think it's a massive disappointment if they don't win a split this year. I think that is like a big disappointment for this roster. I think that- You mean like take a domestic trophy yes. kind of thing? Yes, win the playoffs? take a domestic trophy. We know they're going to go to international events. That's absolutely required. But I think like this is a team that should be in America's finals and should be winning one of them this year. Yes. yes. I, th I think they're well on their way to that. Like they've just, this team needed time to shore up the, the map pool. Feels like I say this every single episode, every time we talk about NRG. But I think they've they've had that time now while Madrid was going on, and those those are the expectations that they set up for themselves. And it's not lofty ones. It's not like we're thinking of Aspas talking about Lev and their expectations for for winning everything as a super team, right? Uh, this you look at the talent on this on this roster. I think Victor and Crashies have got chips in their shoulders, something to prove. Same with Marv from his stint on Sentinels. And Ethan and Dean one already have the expectation of being winners because they're just coming off the back of a championship win. So the, this team, I mean, they've got the fire, the fire and the passion in the right places from players that we know are good and they've reached reached peaks before. And they really just need the time. They just need the time to 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 make sure that every other map is actually quite quite good and fleshed out. And they've got it now, and they're they're well on their way. I think the only hiccup they might have in that um, regular season scheduling. And it's not even really a point to be made, but it is, again, the back-to-back -back games that they have to prep for in week three for Lev and MIBR. I don't think they'll have too much trouble navigating that, but MIBR, I still want to know where MIBR is at in terms of their level. They might like, be good. I think, they, I think they might be a sneaky good team, potentially, good, that yeah. could do some damage when we're expecting it to be a bit of a slam dunk for some teams. Yeah. They might also fall into the same trap. Because if there's yeah. one thing I know about NRG is that sometimes they fall into hubris when it comes to prepping for opponents. Wait, that is, that's... wait I got something on this, Brent. I got something. Okay. So after that Sentinels loss, the day after, Chet mandated practice in the morning. And then they just screamed for the next month straight with no breaks. God damn. Jesus. That explains okay. the form we saw. No? Like, yeah. Yeah. that explains why they were just frying. Like, their individual form in that series was 
it was nuts. It was like we saw the potential, right? Like you were it's, like, oh, this is this is kind of crazy. Like we see them like frying people in individual fights. That's so funny though, be, as well, because I saw Reddit threads being like, Demon One hasn't played ranked in so long. He's gonna <laughs> fall off. <laughs> Meanwhile, behind the scenes, he's yeah. like fucking getting his head pushed to the grindstone by by Chet. He's got like a yeah, chain on his leg attached to the computer. <laughs> yeah. Um <laughs> Let, let's let's go to the battle of the century then, which was Sen Hundred Thieves rematch. All roads lead back to this game, uh, but honestly, the cope that uh, it was TMV and Sliggy that were selling the Hundred Thieves cope, weren't they? Saying that Hundred Thieves might have a good chance to finish yeah. even top of their group because they have a chance to be able to beat um, Sentinels right here, and then it would get easier later on. Uh, well, you know, obviously they didn't win, but. How do you feel coming out of a game like this where they play the winner of Madrid fairly close? I, I felt pretty good about 100 Thieves. I, I think that okay. uh, the, they got 2 out, but the first map in particular, I think a lot of the set stuff that they were showing was really cool. Cryo was back on Jet. He was absolutely owning. They played the same comp G2 did with this Sova Gecko idea, and I think they... they did some really nice stuff with it. On their attacking side, their executes were looking clean and coordinated. This looked like a team that was playing very cohesively together. They were doing a good job of trading Cryo out, and they really got themselves on a nice start, but then they lost both pistols, and yep. it came down to a 13-10. And uh, they lost some, some, some key rounds in the second half. But overall, I felt like this was a pretty positive sign for 100 Thieves. This was like the most invigorated. I feel like I've watched this team play in a bit, and I'm really walking away from this game not really in my doomerism era because they did play the, the champs, and uh, yeah. they got a little owned on split. But I, I don't think they're necessarily quite for me on the same tier as like your Sentinels, your NRG right now. But I think this is a squad that is like in the running for like top four, top six Americas. Yeah. I'd be inclined to agree with that. I think, where, where the hell did Josh go? Yeah, he, did, he doesn't like I'm going to let him talk. Yeah, the, um, yeah, I think there's been a massive overreaction to, um, to 100 Thieves losing against Sentinels because I think in the, for a lot of 100 Thieves fans and I think a lot of fans watching, the expectation was, oh, Senna are going to be exhausted after just winning Madrid. Um, but the the thing that we've seen, and the fact that they didn't think John QT was going to be playing, but then he he was sitting on on all the scrims that they were playing with Curry, and he comes in last minute, and and um, it, the team barely looked like they missed a beat, to be honest. Um, but the one thing that we've at least been told and shown over and over and over again is that if you have the most reps on the big stage, anti shredding has become less of an issue, and I think that's because teams don't put as much stock into big any shadable moments within their comps and they're focusing more on like how they react in certain scenarios and how they play together but the reps are really important on the big stage and there's no team that has more reps than sentinels right now so they are looking still really fucking good i think this is a team that's just well honed right at the beginning of the season for obvious reasons they played so many goddamn matches and yeah 100 thieves did put up a, a reasonable challenge they, they kind of you know fell flat a little bit towards map two don't get me wrong but that sentinel split and despite the fact that Sentinels looked weaker towards the end of Madrid on that map, on Split, it's still the fucking home field advantage. They still feel good about that map, and they're constantly making minor, minor adjustments whenever they get a loss on it. So it's, it's a fantastic map for them. I don't think you can be too hard-pressed about this performance. The, the one th thing that I wanted to see kind of solved with 100 Thieves, I think, was Asana getting ahead of himself in terms of thinking about the rest of his team playing around him. Because that was a big problem for them in the kickoff quals. And I don't know if that really got solved as much. Icebox wasn't really a factor because, again, he was on the, the get-go. And Cryer was frying and he was being set up pretty well. But on Split, I don't know how much of that loss really does come down to that. Where they're just, they're so out of sync because Asana wants to take a way faster tempo than the team can play at just just because of their agents and just because of how ready they are to play off that i don't know what you guys thought about it uh, dude i i've never been super harsh on him but i think Sha bang shanta had like a pretty rough one here like i thought on split in particular like his a lurks on attack were really really mm -hmm. off time like there was a couple times where he really got caught off guard there was also just some like questionable calls in general like fade ulting B heaven into a like a, almost a dry B pop. 
so you're like pushing them off of heaven into the B site, and it just is gonna then make things a little bit more difficult for you. Uh, I'm trying to find the particular bang round I'm talking about, but I also sent Kurt around on Icebox. Dude, the rounds on Icebox were so deflating to watch, like as someone that had faith in them here. Like this round yeah. is just, you know, Cryo holding the line that the wingman is like coming at him on. So Saucy just pre-fire one taps that line. It's like, this is just, oh, why, why are they playing so like up like this? And... I, I find it difficult though. Like that round to me just screams like God tier from Sassy too, who isn't a. I, I, I was watching a lot of these rounds thinking, damn, this looks like the best we've seen from Cryo because he was finding opportunities to get very aggressive off the rest of his team's utility and apply a lot of pressure to his opponents too. Um, I thought the attack side was really nicely called by Bustio and had great moments with Cryo properly entering and looking like a real attack side duelist player. But then, yeah, it, it fell to pieces. I, I didn't feel that critical about their Icebox performance, personally. Because they... Yeah, at the same time, though, when Cryo's dropping, like, 26 kills, they should be able to get it across the line against a team that they have many VODs on who's playing towards the bottom of their map pool. Um... But I was I was very disappointed with their split because it felt like not much had changed. Um, I, yeah. It looked very similar to their kickoff performance. They were trying to group up heavy to try to like brawl with their team comp, and Sen were just like, no, we'll just sidestep that and go somewhere else on the map. Oh. And so 100 Thieves were not really able to get the value on their defense side that they should have been able to, uh, or would have been able to against other teams that were stupider. Yeah. Okay, I actually, Kurt, pivot, do the one I just sent you. It's the the pistol. I was when I saw their buy on this pistol and their approach, I immediately knew it was over. I was like, <laughs> oh my. bro, bro, what what are they doing? Like they bought look at their buy. What, look at their fucking buy, dude. They have no util yeah. and they're playing 5v5 retake. And this was their approach? Like, yeah. how did they ever, ever, ever expect to hold that site that round? And they're also, I feel like the idea here from 100 Thieves as well is that we can't refight Heaven because Sen are too good at it. So we're going to try to swing through the A main smoke instead to support the players on site. And that is, that's a bold move. It yeah. doesn't really work as well as, there's a reason that the Heaven refight is meta is because it sets you up really well. And that's why Sen are good at stopping that is because it's meta, because it's really good. And so 100 Thieves came up with a, Separate idea to play like three A main and push through the smoke, and they just got minced. Rough, dude. <sighs> yeah, I'm also concerned because I feel like the the long term benefit or the long term solution for Hundred Thieves is getting Cryo on entry and teaching him how to play entry really well and supporting him really well. And on four out of seven of their maps, they're gonna have Asana play Ray's entry, and I, and I think that that is just. I don't think that's a good long-term solution for the team. I don't think... It works for teams like EG when you have somebody like Jorgamo that you can bring in to play Raze. But Jorgamo... I feel like when Jorgamo plays it, there's a difference because he... His team is all on the same game plan of setting him up really well, right? They know they, they want Jorgamo to succeed. They want to try and set him up. But he also understands when he needs to take pauses in, in the really high tempo moments of when he can just wait that, that half second for his team to get back onto a line to throw another piece of util to get him further. And I, that's why I was like, Split's a really weird one for me because I was trying to look for, have they improved that aspect of their game? Or is it just still going to be um, that, that kind of outer, outer sync play whenever Asana is going to be playing that primary duelist role and trying to, trying to really entry for them? Um, and it was hard to get the read on that because it felt like that wasn't, that, that, wasn't the, the, that wasn't the decider as to why the map was so one-sided at times. It was just their overall no. ideas of how they wanted to fight on the map versus a team that is incredibly well drilled and has had practice at losing on the map against teams as well that were punishing like that kind of retake protocols there center easily one of the best in the world when it comes to understanding how to fight for the right map control at the right times on split at all times as well so it it, it felt like i didn't even get that question answered from 100 yeah. thieves on that on that one that one sample size map of split so i actually i think the hate towards austin is so misplaced like i think a lot of their problems are from other ways so i mentioned bang earlier so i sent kurt like a couple clips 
And I want you to think about like how often you see this A lurker dying when it's like John QT or, you know, you watch Gen G and it's the jet. But like here, they're throwing a haunt from mid over A and it's a decent idea to get the Lurk activated with that, but look at the timing, it's terrible. Like the haunt is actually yeah. after, it's, it's kind of a half-baked idea to begin with. And then the, literally the very next round, Bang also dies on the Lurk. I sent her two clips where he's just dying at the start of the round. And when your A Lurker is dying like this to open up rounds, I mean, keep in mind, we are now looking at- Oh, that's so nice though from second. I think that's like, <laughs> We saw the pistol, which was a 5v5 retake poorly played. We saw the bonus, which was the push on Bang, he died. And then another push on Bang, and he died. You can't come back from that. Like, it's over. When you play mm -hmm. Sentinels on split, like, you can't make three errors like that in the first, you know, half of your half. It's, yeah. you're done. It, yeah. It's it. Well, it's been a long time since 100 Thieves have been able to get a win. I mean, they, okay. if we're talking not off season, I mean, if we're talking off-season, they also lost to Oxygen too, but Oxygen pretty good. But if, if we're purely looking at VCT, the last time they got a win was in May of last year against Furia. Um, looking at their upcoming schedule, and bearing in mind that there is still some hope, but some things going wrong, they have G2, Cloud9, Crew. Those are teams that should be middle to the middle of the pack you know g2 a bit higher cloud nine maybe a bit lower depending actually on how you feel about their game against lev these should be winnable games do you feel like they will be able to get the win or multiple wins i i think so and i sent kurt one last clip and uh kurt i think you know which one this is uh th the vibes dude this is you guys seen the vibes in the 100 thieves camp no I mean, you, I want I actually want Josh to break down this. Give me a book. second to <laughs> load it up again. I accidentally okay. closed the tab. Because I, I thought they were pretty good at instances during kickoff. Because I was like trying to play close attention to that. Um, by I mean, like, listening to the players on the stage. Usio's a yeller. Asuna in comms is just like. Yeah, Asuna's. Like incredible. when you listen to their cam videos, his, his comms are crazy. Yo, they did a skip off, bro. Look at this. Look at the vibes. <laughs> <laughs> look at the vibes, but wait till wait, wait till we see Mike. Wait till we see Mike. Hold up. Oh, look Mike. at that dog. Look at this skin. <laughs> look at that skin. <laughs> they got dogs. Like, bro, the vibes are great out there. Yeah. This pupper's yeah. so cute. They oh, can't lose God. if they have a cord. <laughs> Sorry, why does why does the clip begin though with I have no free will anymore? Oh, I told Kurt to cut to Mike skipping because right, but that but that <laughs> really lends a dystopian feel to the entire thing. I don't know why I Kurt have did no that. free will. I don't know why Kurt did that. And then he's skipping around. <laughs> Look at this Kurt didn't dog. edit the video. This dog's amazing. Wait, yeah. it's so little and he's running around. I know. I yeah. like, yeah. A lot of teams could do with having just a, a dog around the office. Can we when talk about playing? that skipping is like the most efficient form of getting around? It's like <laughs> running, but it doesn't feel like it takes the same amount of cardio. It's like the same speed, but more efficient because you're in the air half the time. Is that true? Yeah. I don't, I don't feel There's it. Just absolutely feel it. No, no way just feel the true. vibes. No, just feel the vibes. If you skip, you feel fast, you feel free. If you run, pain and suffering. Yeah. I mean, I agree with the mental side of it, but it's certainly not a more Mentality's efficient Mentality is everything. Form. Mentality's everything. Inefficiency. Okay. Okay. That's why I um, skip everywhere. <laughs> how, many, how many wins? The cops are coming to get you, Josh. The cops are coming. Yeah, they, that's not coming from me, I don't think. That's me. We don't, yeah, we don't have police around me. here, I can tell you that. <laughs> this, this, is, this is like hot fuzz. <laughs> they ain't doing shit around here. Um, let's, let's move on to the predictions then, because we're going to start actually with the 100 Thieves Pred. So I was going to ask you anyway the same Ooh. question, which was, mm. you know, do you think 100 Thieves are going to be able to get the win? Well, their opener is against G2. So let's see where people went. Put your money where your mouth is. I'm going slower G2. this time so I don't press the wrong buttons. Oh, there we go. <laughs> G2 right, favored against 100 Thieves, possibly based on how they performed this week, but we'll see what people go with. But the audio okay, listeners, two. it's Ooh, Sean nice. and Mimi going with 100 Thieves, while myself and Bren go with G2. Um, uh, Sean, you know, I want to start with you because you're talking a lot about how 100 Thieves fucked up and you've <laughs> predded them against G2. Yeah, I feel like... Um... 
I'm like ill. Like, I don't know. I might have like <laughs> fucking mad cow disease or something. Like, I don't know what's wrong with me. Like, how do I keep? Yeah, I, I see so much potential, though. Like, and I know what they're capable of. And I know their opponent was really hard, even though. I, I, first of all, I didn't like how Zix used the excuse of John in that interview. Do you guys remember that? No. I did not like what that. What was that? When they do the coach interviews after map one, they're like, yeah, but we prepped for Curry. And uh, oh, right. John's here. I'm like, bro, you can't mm. use that as an excuse if you're a coach. Like, game one, you didn't really enjoy that. But well, I how does that affect your prep as well? Yeah, I feel like you like, can't prep for Curry. Like, what in, is the prep for Yeah, exactly. Curry? I don't like uh, excuses coming from like leadership figures. I feel like the I'm only saying. prep is like the social media manager changing their outlook. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I that's just think, the important prep. It's like, oh, fuck, my scheduled tweet. I have to change it. I just think this is like one of those games where the 100 Thieves players are very familiar with the G2 players. They were a really big scrim partner of ours back in the day. And even though Icy has been added to this team, I just think like the level of confidence on the 100 Thieves players against these particular players is very high. Whereas like when they play against Sentinels who just came back from Madrid, they like shrink in that moment, you know, like this is a moment where they feel they're better and they overperform. It's weird, like how the team works like that. But I swear they're going to I just feel like they're going to blast G2. I don't know why, because on paper. Yeah, I should pick G2 based on what we saw. But yeah, the the chat is providing some additional context here that uh, Zix did go on to Zelsus' stream and clarify that what he meant to say from that was that they didn't anti because they didn't think Zen were going to play their normal stuff. And so that's what he meant. Like, they were focused more on their own game rather than trying sure. to anti, so they didn't get the benefits mm. of really, like, the tape being out there. So they does played a fair game against Sen because Sen didn't have any game footage either. So, yeah. no, it doesn't change yeah. anything. It just means... Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't know. I, I'm I, I'm kind of punting here because I've already talked about how kind of happy I was with what we, we saw from G2. They trounced DG. I think that team has a lot of potential, and I think it's a close game that you could even consider G2 the favorite. But main reasons, I'm swinging for 100 Thieves. Cryo, for the first time ever, is playing Valorant in like yes. two years. <laughs> like, it's been it's been so what long was he since before? the mouse and keyboard wasn't plugged in. It was like no, his little, bro his little brother see. was team viewered in, remoted into the PC playing. Now he actually realized, oh, shit, the Player 2 controller wasn't plugged in. And <laughs> he, he got over the classic <laughs> troll. And now he's actually playing the video game again. I like the maps where he plays controller. I think it's really sick. I think keeping Asta on dive is... Is, is Bueno when we yep. get to see him on those raise maps. And I really liked what we saw from the Jet. I think they've dialed in, getting with the times on the meta, playing the double initiator gecko stuff that we got to see kind of a taster of in kickoff, but I think they've refined it quite well into this one. I think they have really good vibes right now. The team is probably, even the, after that loss to Sentinels, in a good headspace. Um, and I think it's going to be a close match that 100 Thieves is going gonna, is gonna to eke out. Okay. Uh... Uh, do you want to give your piece on G2 or should we move on to the next one? Bro? I'm, I'm, I mean, this is pretty 50 50, I think, with this match, to be honest. Okay. I think these teams are going to be closely matched. I was just, I was, I was more impressed with G2, I think, with their, yeah. with their turnaround sure. against EG, because I also still quite rate EG as a team. And I think that, yeah, with Jorgma playing off, uh, I don't know. It was the, the second map was kind of handed a little bit easy to them, but. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's it's it, it. This is a tough one to call. I think it could go either way, any direction. G two though, they they impress me more. I would say. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's move on to the. the Wait next one game, second. Though. Oh, one second. Yeah, I got what? a DM from Cryo. He heard Mimi was talking shit. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no! I actually oh, did not no. get a DM from Cryo. <laughs> that, that bit. Please don't DM Cryo anyone. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the little guy, <laughs> little guy, little, little guy, guy stepping up. I love that. Summoning bit. for hundred thieves. That it was, was such good a good bit. bit. Dude, so that's good. Me, what baby. sold it though? What sold it though that we've never done before is getting quotes from the, the player players. Yes. Is awesome. yes. Oh so my good. god, Dude, that sold also, it so Also, baby well. was awesome. That he so actually good. just looked like he actually just looked, he just looked like, like king. king. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yep. The crab walk, so good. Did that Dude, that, that I'm sad they didn't put it in. Artin, but Bala when he was doing his bit, literally picked up chips and threw them at the cameraman while we were recording and they didn't put that in a cut i i know i watching this skit made me realize that my brain chemistry is fried because all i was thinking was i need the shots i need the new players to be quicker 
I need, I need the shots to be quicker. I need rapid action shots. I'm like, okay, we've seen this player. Give me the next one. Give me the next one. What's the next? Where's the next hit coming from? Where's the next hit? And I'm just like, I, I, my brain is cooked by short form content to that degree. TikTok where, is poison. Yeah, it is poison. It's poison for the mind. But if I'm I thinking mean, that, what do, what do our fucking 13 year old audience think about that? Oh, they're not even watching we, this. We, yeah. We've been going for three hours, 20 minutes. All the TikTok viewers are gone by yeah, now. Well, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying Plat Chat viewers. I'm saying VCT viewers. Oh, there's VCT. A, there's a lot yeah. of like Zuma brain, brain yeah. activity going on with the, with the, with the viewer base. Of I, I saw a tweet well. of fucking Finesse reacting to that skit, and he just deadpan, just glared at the screen the whole time. It was fucking awesome. Dude, that I was, was crying, dude. <laughs> dude. The ender part was so good. <laughs> Um, let, let's go on to the next pred, man. So, this game, mate, I don't even want to know. Like, just pose for the fucking photo. It said <laughs> people's level your tan. <laughs> what? Oh, wait, wait, what the what? hell? Wait, no, no I didn't put it. Wait, Kurt, no. Kurt, this is not what I put. This uh, is not what sure? I put. No, don't take the picture. Don't this take the picture. Sure? I'm positive. I literally spent like 15 <laughs> minutes chatting shit about how bad Leviathan was. All right. Well, I oh, had to so do the, your preds during the show because you were, you were so sleepy funny. little guy. Maybe so I misclicked it because, again, I, I got out of bed, realized my alarm didn't get off. I'm like, so oh, funny. shit, Kurt sent me the preds. Dude, that's so much funnier than just posing for the photo, <laughs> yeah. though. I was All right, get, for the wait, photo. Are you give me the sure? percentage chance. Screen. Give me the percentage chance of this actually happening. 80, 5%. 20. 20? You're still giving them a 20% chance to win. Bala's rule. Bala's rule does not apply here, sure. Wait, 20. Wait, can they can they play Clove? No. No, I don't think so. Clove no, is in it's... week three now? Yeah, because there's a bug with Clove. Right? And that was Lev's shot. They gotta fix that bug. <laughs> <laughs> they, gotta, they gotta fix that bug, get tens on Clove. Um, 5%. Yeah. 1 in 20 times? 1 in 20, yeah. Mm. It's low, whatever it is, isn't it? It's low. I mean, you need an Aspas like God tier performance, I yes. think, to, uh, to pull this one over the line. Even bigger than he did in the previous yeah. game. Uh, the next one, though, I think low-key hidden banger of America's next week that I think oh. people should probably won't care about, but should care about. The next game is Crew playing against MIBR, who we didn't see this week. Oh, and the only group. Sean going for the Crewpium. Um, Pop of the group. Sean, what about right? the Crewpium? Dude, I, you guys know me. Wait, hold up. <laughs> Where's he gone? You Bro, it's me. the Where's only jersey I've ever bought. Look at this. <laughs> Wait, really? Look at this. The only jersey in esports I've ever bought. Not even You've trolling. You've never taken the tag off. You haven't worn it. I wore it. Wait. No, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't. Wear it. I didn't. Wear it. <laughs> <laughs> You've never worn it. Buys <laughs> be... shirt immediately yeah. throws it in the corner. No, I actually, I think Crew is a good team. I, I think they have yeah. all of the pieces necessary to actually make playoffs. I went <laughs> through it yesterday. They have the star duelist. I mean, Kesnit is literally one of the best duelists in our league. I don't care what anyone says. Yeah. That content creator that said he was the worst is like That's smoking just crack. Just pure oh. bait. Pure yeah. bait. bait and cold. So then they have Heat now that they've brought in as like this flex player. And when I saw that entry, I was like, oh, this is this is nice. I hope they keep him. And I noticed they did keep him. MTA is not coming back. Shy is on Senti. He's a great Senti. And then they have like dual IGLs in Melser and Klaus. I just feel like they have everything. And then they have a yapper as a coach. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah that's true. I, 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 was, I will say I've, I'm, I'm in full agreement, especially about the calling, because that's what impressed me the most, I think, was just um, either Klaus or Melzer. I don't know who it was. I, it was, is Klaus. I assumed it was Klaus. Right. Yeah. I, dude, the macro calling of, of crew is, it was is good. It's good. Like this team have that aspect of their gameplay down. They can shoot well. And so they have, that's enough qualities for a team to really be quite dangerous. Um, why am I going MIBR if that's the case? I don't know. I'm kind of getting swayed now that we're talking about crew, but I think it's recency bias more than, more than anything. My, Cause MIBR, I also is, think it might be a really good team. Yeah. My problem is while I agree with Sean that crew do have all of those good qualities, they got demonstrated massively on Lotus. Like Lotus, attacks like calling looks awesome. Heat's utility looks fantastic. And his fragging was really good too. And then we go onto the later maps, and I felt it go down a little bit. On Icebox, I wasn't that impressed with what I was watching. It just felt like kind of you were getting big results out of Kesnit and Heat because they're going to continue to be popping. And I didn't really see the same level of um, of really solid 
team structure that I was noticing on Lotus from them as the series got deeper. So for me, it's just like a map pool question mark for crew and MIBR genuinely playing well and coming up with lots of good ideas during kickoff. Uh, we don't know how good MIBR are really going to be. Yeah, I was just, I'm mainly impressed with the the stuff we saw from, from kickoff from this team. I think the, the coordination looked really good. A lot of their, their, their members were like having completely revitalized performances. JZZ Jay looked great. Uh, Artzin, the, the new addition to the squad as well, was, uh, I think, like meshing with the squad really well. Like he wasn't over committing to anything. He wasn't being like a silly, stupid guy, but he was also still having a great performance as a Star Duelist player. Um, but yeah, I, I do agree with Sean. I think that it's 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 no longer Krupium to say they're a good team. I, I think like yeah. crew is legit a good team. Um I'm just kind of banking on MIBR still like improving from the already good stuff we got to see out of this team in kickoff. What a damn week this has been. DFM win, crew win. Yeah. What a, what is a yeah. timeline we Wait, live in where we're talking about crew. MIBR crew as like, oh, this is gonna be a great match. Can I glaze <laughs> yeah. crew for one second? Please. Yeah, go. Okay. Kurt, play those lotus clips. Play the, play the default. <laughs> Dude, look at this default. So they start off on this C default. They recognize yeah. that the defenders are playing C. The Viper then lurks out A. They're like, all right, fuck this. Let's not take mound. Let's go back to C here. So they, or I'm sorry, go back to long A. So they take long A, kind of speed up through this part, Kurt. They end up grabbing the ore, popping the door, showing a lot of pressure. I think they even break baby door. They leave maybe a lurk here. They push back mound, they run it down on this solo player, and they take C. Like they, the way they manipulate rotations on yeah, Lotus it was, it was really is insane. Good. And then they have this lurk coming in also. Like they ran laps around Furia on their yeah. map pick. And I think, yeah. like you said, the reason why they lost on Icebox is because Furia was running the Omen comp and they had Arena in place of the Omen. So it's literally just a comp diff that they lost 13 11. I'm. A huge believer in this team right now and by the way that was bullshit that by was the way, a what you just bullshit. saw the, the 2k was <laughs> bullshit <laughs> but it's kesnit he gets those yeah but you can't you can't persuade me there was any bullet that went anywhere near mw there <laughs> well one went to his head i d i disagree the game is flawed <laughs> <laughs> okay kurt play the next one play play this defensive round i want to show you like what they're what they're cooking like they are really cooking now we go on the other side. So now Furia on their C default. What's the difference? Oh, look, they have, they're ready to fight at mount. But they, Kesnit nades this guy out. He knows he TPs out because that's their protocol. And if you look at the minimap, Kesnit is booking it right now to A. Like he is so far ahead of what Furia want to do in this round. And it just shows like the level of prep on this team. Like the whole half after this round, Melser had solo mount control with this one-way smoke. And he would break like boom bots and draw out so much util. I just see a lot of really good fundamentals when I watch crew and I see the star players in the right spots. Yeah. Well, glazed like a donut. I yep. appreciate that. <laughs> like a pink donut. Um, let's move on to our final <laughs> prediction. What? You... All right. Keep going. Keep going. Keep, going. Pink, keep talking. So. Keep talking. Pink like crew. So yeah, the final I, I pick. That... Thank you. The final pick. Don't fuck with the pink donut. Well, I, I mean, do if you it. want to fuck with the pink donut, but okay. okay. Cloud9 uh, versus <laughs> Evil Geniuses. Cloud9 versus Evil Geniuses. That's our final Pred of the day. And we're a mixed bag again, actually. So okay. Bren and Sean going for EG. Uh, Mimi, why have you gone for Cloud9 here? It was sloppy, muddy, oily men they were. <laughs> the sloppy, muddy, oily men. Indeed, that's exactly what they were. But EG got fucking owned. To, to be honest, I, I think both these teams are in a very similar position, even though Cloud9 just won against a team that should be really good and, and EG just got trounced, right? They're both like mid-table North American teams that have a chance to go up, that have some interesting new additions of younger players who had solid debuts but were nothing like absolutely incredible and are both in a very similar position. I just think Cloud9 coming off of that, that win will have an insane amount of confidence even if it was a sloppy muddy men game still if you're telling yourself we just beat Ospos, we just beat furia it's like the first match for some of our teammates back or for moose the first time ever i think that's a huge kind of boost to their mental 
some of the stuff we were already discussing before. I I like Moose on this team. I like some of the like the the ideas they're bringing out. It wasn't incredibly inspiring against Leviathan, but they got it done in a tough matchup. And I don't think this is a team that EG is going to be able to come out and have like a crazy good anti strat against or anything. So I I favor them slightly here. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I just think like Cloud9 loves picking Icebox. You know, Potter historically likes playing ice, Icebox a lot. So that'll be in this series. Their Icebox can't look as bad as what it just did with that Harbor. You know, with Apoth literally got 35 damage around on Harbor. Like 35 yeah, damage yeah. around. So it will not be that bad again. And Potter historically has hooked up really good game plans on Icebox. I just think like, you know, Jog can't have that bad of a game again. And while Cloud9 will look better, it's just... And I actually do have faith in Cloud9's roster. I like the, the mixture of experience and like Oxy being in there. Uh, it's a close game. Okay, it's a coin flip. I've actually changed my mind with my prediction and not due to anything any of you have said. I just... <laughs> this is, the, the thing that I'm thinking about here is that C9's very loose aggressive play style with oxy i was thinking to myself yeah. well the firepower diff here oxy might just run over them in a lot of these duels but then actually i think the way that eg play is fairly well set up to try to punish a player that takes as many risks as oxy does if they get onto maps like um do you remember watching eg play sunset during kickoff and they had a lot of good ideas for punishing early round aggression yeah with the did. stuns yeah. with the paranoia so many different setups for that I, I feel myself trending towards the EG pick here because I think they are actually going to do a lot of prep to punish the way that C9 try to take those, like, yeah, like higher risk fights. Yeah. And, I, and Sean's point of Jorg having a, an off, off day, and that, I just think that's it's, it's most likely an outlier. From what we've seen of Jorgmo's career, like, that guy is the GOAT. I've never seen a man play Radiant ranked and also Pal World at the same time with such efficiency. <laughs> like he's actually he's a phenom. He's a phenom. I'm a, I have to assume that it's a one off. Like it's it's he. This team is is I still think quite good. Maybe it's just pure fucking cope at this point. I don't know, but uh, I'm I'm still holding out. And I think as well to to the point of like I spoke to being played as well, Sean. Genuinely, I wouldn't fucking hate them going back to the deadlock comp if they've got a lot of prep onto it, especially now that they've thrown in the red herring of that prior comp. Um, because yeah. I, imagine imagine you're pr trying to prep for the upcoming match. Like, do you still put a lot of time into an older comp when they've shown that they're playing something different? I mean, maybe, considering yeah. they lost on it, but... They, they could do a lot of stuff, mm. yeah. Like, that's yeah. why, like, I just have faith in Potter to bounce off a, of a loss, yeah. you know? And I don't know. It's not like I'm super confident about it. Like, I don't think EG has looked way better than Cloud9 by any means, but I think they'll bounce off of that loss pretty well. Mm. Well, it's it's, uh, that's, that's our final prediction. And it's time for the most important segment every week before we close out. It's Wyatt's Weekly Award. Ooh. No, it's not. <laughs> it's just on the screen. I think Google Drive Flash decided thing. to crash today. That's why the background... Oh, uh, I see disappeared oh. so okay. well, unfortunately no video because google drive Brent, is can down you do an right impromptu now. video impromptu yeah make us a video video yeah, um, yeah. um a guy like me loves to drink sparkling water and so that's why <laughs> you today the you the winner of wyatt's weekly award are gonna sparkle like a star <laughs> that's wonderful that's everything that i could have possibly wanted wow that's well that's whenever. the intro for wyatt's weekly award um <laughs> I'm stuck between two people here, and I want you to try to help me out. One, I mean, I'm not going to let Bren vote on this for starters. One of them is Angel, because I feel like he just went nuts in their game to be able to get them across the line. But the other one, late, last-minute surge victor, potentially, for Wyatt's Weekly Award, is um, Anthem, who's been on DFM and just been getting pasted for ages and performed really well in their win today. Uh, I mean, and maybe not really well. I'm looking at the stat line, actually, and he was negative 11, but I felt like he had some really big moments to be able to get them across the line. And I think, is he the only player that's surviving from that old roster of DFM? I think he is, isn't I he? I don't know. He's a day yeah. one. 
He's a day one. I think day it's got to be day anthem. one right after die. losing what, like seventeen games in a row or something absurd. Finally getting your first one. It's got to be him. Yeah, go to so go it's to the sunset bad, stats of that series because I have an outside pick, third choice for potentially mm. why it's weekly award. And who's that? There's a wannabe in this server, and it's Mini Boo. Mini Boo is the only neon. Okay, <laughs> Mini Boo's insane. Like he's my goat. Mini Boo's actually he is the incredible. Goat. He did he his exams, came in, and then beat Fnatic 2-0. Like, yeah. that's kind of insane. Yeah, but we don't know if he passed the exams. We should that's wait true. until we know whether or not he passed to give him that's the best report. <laughs> he could have tanked his exams yeah. and rushed back to play. Good yeah, point. he might have just so, failed. He might have thrown away his promising academic career in order to win a game against Fnatic that ultimately won't mm. mean much in terms of his grander life. But So what uh, kind of grade does he need on his exam to get the weekly award? I mean, a, a better grade than I would have given most of the teams that were losing this week, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Does he need an A combined with that performance to get it? Um, yeah, I think so. I don't think a passing grade is good enough. I think <laughs> I think I need an A from me. Yeah, that's fucked. He's, he's an intelligent young guy. I'm sure he's going to be able to do it. That's he's been so studying it's not hard. enough that he beat Fnatic. No, no, that's fucked. I don't think that is enough. I I think. I, I, I kind of want to send it to, I kind of want to send it to Anthem. I really yeah. do. Yeah. Uh, because I don't feel like he was the best performing player on DFM, but I think he deserves it for sticking through the dark times and coming out the other side. Sure. I think May is probably the best player on DFM. He's, he's playing really well right now, but, but goddamn, buy the DFM bundle. It's actually not that bad, by the way. The DFM bundle doesn't look too Dude, shabby. The bundles are the worst thing that ever happened to Valorant. <laughs> bundle, I swear to God, every interview, every arrival interview. Oh, I, a real question about your gameplay. <laughs> bundle, bundle, bundle. I've had enough. I've had enough. I'm not buying your shitty bundle. I want to know about. I want to know about you and the team, and give me a reason to care. Don't just tell me to buy something without any reason. You're not Celsius. <laughs> I think true. the reason's pretty self-explanatory for Anthem, with the picture, because they. Won. Yeah, this is fine. This is fine. Yeah, okay. I, this is fine. I'm talking yeah. about like America's players. <laughs> okay. specifically calling out america's players yep. yeah there we go well any viewers at home tell us what you think the match of the week is for next week uh our pick was a paper x against gen g yeah. but if you have another match that you think is better than that one throw it down in the comments and we'll potentially change what the match of the week is and then you can tune in uh, have a look in the community tab tomorrow and you can vote on your prediction at the moment the timmies are three and one don't fuck up little timmies <laughs> don't fuck up because we are coming for you uh, <laughs> Thank you, Sean, for joining us with the America's portion as well. Yes. And uh, that does it. That's got to be one of our longest episodes of oh, all time. So it might be the longest. Ridiculous. And our Three outro hours, might not minutes? play. Yeah, the well, let's Google play. Drive is Dude, not working. Do you guys want to I want to see what happens. All yeah, right. click the button.